Homecoming weekend at Howard University. The South Carolina State Bulldogs in town looking to end the Howard Bison's two-game win streak. It's the MEAC College Football Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. I'm Phil Shaner alongside the czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt. And the leading rusher in the MEAC is South Carolina State's quarterback, Tyrese Nick. Nick makes the Bulldogs offense go. We saw him grow up in front of our eyes against Morgan State. If he can continue to progress in the right direction like he has, they have a great chance to win this ball game. The Howard offense is no longer a secret, but their defense making big plays at the cornerback position, Brian Cook. He's the second leading tackle on the team, has five pass breakers and an interception, and he made the play of the game last week against Morgan State. I'm excited to see him get out here and put together an encore performance. Rain in Washington, D.C., but the Bison, they want a chance at the Celebration Bowl. Three teams are tied in second place in the MEAC. This is a key game today. It's the Bulldogs and the Bison, the MEAC College Football Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Homecoming at HU. Kickoff is next. Hurry. Offer ends October 31st. Go to GetFiles.com. Fever College Football Game of the Week featuring the MEAC is brought to you by Howard University. Rainy day in our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. Homecoming for the Howard Bison. Looking to stay alive in a chase for the MEAC title and a chance to play in the Celebration Bowl. Howard final three outings of the four games will be played here at Green Stadium. South Carolina State has altered wins and losses, including last week a victory over Delaware State 30-19. South Carolina State is seeking consecutive wins for the first time this season in a key MEAC game. Howard, we had them last week in a come-from-behind win for Coach London on the road in Baltimore over Morgan State. They want to build on that today. It's going to be a great game, and, and what a situation you find yourself in if you're Coach Mike London. You have your team on a precipice of potentially playing for a MEAC championship and also a berth to the Celebration Bowl. Like you mentioned, this is going to be a big game for both teams involved. Morgan State last week had a lead, but Howard came back. Coach London in his second year, first year as coach last season, turned the Bison around in a hurry. They finished last year with seven wins. Homecoming, of course, some of the activities struggling because of the rain but they still have had the parade and let's head down to our third member of our team he'll be dodging the rain ryan pierce ryan phil emery the rain is still coming down to slow to a trickle wind blowing right to left across the field not ideal playing conditions walking on this field a bit soggy it drains well though it's going to be tough to defend those receivers d backs gonna have to work to get their footing could be a high scoring game with two good quarterbacks phil emery Thank you very much, Ryan. Game time temperature 49 degrees. And Howard will kick to South Carolina State to get our MIA College Football Game of the Week underway on the Sports Fever Television Network. Hope everyone is in dry enjoying some MIA football here today. Rain started yesterday afternoon, continued through the night here in Washington, D.C. The Bison will kick it off to the Bulldogs. In soggy conditions like this, the advantage always goes to the runner because you are knowing where you're going more so than the defender. Always an exciting time. Homecoming last year. Howard victorious over Morgan State in their homecoming game. Let's see what South Carolina State can do on the return. Is Minus gets across the 40-yard line, and that's where he stopped. Penalty markers down on the play after the return by Binus for the Bulldogs. It's going to be a face mask. It's going to push them across the 50-yard line. So great starting field position for the Bulldogs. That's going to help South Carolina State's cause with their quarterback who leads the MEAC in rushing. 563 yards rushing, five rushing touchdowns. The sophomore from Johnston, South Carolina, really is the guy that gets this team going offensively. He is their number one option. Tyrese Nick is, is a guy that's a young quarterback that's improving. We talked about it in the open, how he grew up in front of our eyes against Morgan State, led them down the field for a victory, and how he's continued to progress in the right direction with his offense speaks volumes of what the, the job that Coach Buddy Pugh has done so far this season with his young football team. Rick Warney is our referee heading this MEAC crew, and there is 
South Carolina State's coach, Buddy Pugh. Buddy Pugh needs just seven more wins to become the all-time winningest coach in school history. Certainly a MEAC legend. Buddy Pugh, a lot of fun to talk to, and he's seen it all in his time at South Carolina State. Including this penalty that we just, it was like, it's a, and they both offset, so you have to re-kick. I was wondering what was going on there. That's what you talk about him seeing everything. This was the first for Buddy Pugh. Buddy Pugh graduated from South Carolina State, longtime coach there. As South Carolina State program had a story, story past, a lot of MEAC championships. For the last couple of years, it's been on decline a little bit, and Coach Pugh wants to make sure that uh, he can get things going again for the Bulldogs. Well, you talk about a team that you could make a case for being 5-0 and in the MEAC, uh, in MEAC play. They've lost a lot of close games. They had a lead against a and We saw them win against Morgan State. So this young team is starting to grow up. And when you look toward next year, this may be one of the favorites in the conference. So a redo for our MEAC College Football Game of the Week. Minus back to receive the kickoff for the Bulldogs. He returned one to the 40-yard line, but the offsetting penalties and re reset here at Green Stadium. So difficult getting this MEAC game going here <laughs> <laughs> for homecoming. Coach London wants an explanation. The clock ran off. The clock right now is at 14.52, so Coach London might be asking about that. Binus back to receive the kick for the Bulldogs for the second time. And we'll do it again. This kick shorter. Dropped at the 20 yard line, then picked up in this short return to the 29 yard line. So now we'll see Tynus Nick, the sophomore quarterback. And they run Jenkins and James, two so redshirt sophomores, and also o Omir Cummings is a guy that they like to run as well. But really, Nick is the guy to get the offense going. Let's take a look at the South Carolina State offense. You see James, they have a couple of good wide receivers as well. Burroughs, nine catches, 220 yards. This offensive line, they had to replace some guys there. But a solid offensive line unit. Keep an eye on left guard Robbie Stevenson, one of the best guards in this conference. So a first and 10 from the 29. And there's a penalty and a whistle. Delay a game on the first play. How does that happen, Emery? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, two penalties to start this ball game, and it's going to be that type of game, I could tell right now by these referees uh, throwing flags all over the place already. You know how we always seem to have that crew, right? <laughs> well, a delay a game to start things off. So uh, first and 15 for Nick and the Bulldogs. Give straight ahead to Jenkins. A career with the carry, short game. Let's take a look at this Howard defense who's Played big last week, the win over Morgan State. They made the plays when they had to, trying to get some pressure from that defensive line. The linebackers are good. They make a lot of tackles, but this secondary's played well. We already talked about Cook, but you have Robinson back there, Freeland. The secondary's starting to come around for this Howard defense. Nick will keep it himself. So dangerous with his legs and gets hit and falls down the 30-yard line. So there's our guy, Brian Cook, coming up to put the hit on Tyrese Nick. And they needed Cook to come up there and make that play because Zamone Robinson, also a linebacker, was getting held right there on the corner. So Cook came flying up in run support, was able to get him on the ground. This is a big piece of what South Carolina State does offensively. So you have them in a backed-up situation third and long. This is where they have to continue to make those strides as an offense, have to be able to convert these third and long opportunities. Third and nine from the 30 for South Carolina State. Last week, a big 30 to 19 win over Delaware State. The week before that, two point loss to Bethune Cookman. And two weeks ago, they snapped their own four star with a win over Morgan State. Third and nine for Nick. He's going to pass, fires, has the completion, and a first down. The far sideline, and Baxley with the catch. And that moves the chains. 12 yard pickup. Nick to Baxley. Got to love Jermaine Baxley right there. 6'3, 210, a redshirt senior out of Georgia being able to run to the stick, stop, turn around, make the reception, and bully upfield for the first down. Baxley, his seventh catch of the season. He had two catches for 59 yards last week, so he's emerging as a 
playmaker on the wide receiver side for the Bulldogs. First and 10 from the 42 just underway. Nick pulls it out and then the pitch. This is what the Bulldogs like to do. Omar Cummings takes the hit after getting a couple of yards, bring up a second and five after a five yard pickup on the pitch to Omar Cummings. This was a great tackle right there by Ty Freeland, just coming up off the block and making a square football hit right on the hip, bringing him down to the ground. So we've seen the option give Howard some issues last week against Morgan State. Let's see how they adjust in this ballgame against South Carolina State. Second and five, Nick out of the shotgun. Option look again. The pitch this time to Jenkins. Jenkins is running room as the first down in the Bison territory, still on his feet. Great effort by Jenkins exploding out of the backfield for a first down and a 28-yard pickup by Jenkins and a first down. And now the Bulldogs working in Bison territory. The one thing South Carolina has in droves is tailback depth. They have a lot of good tailbacks. We're going to see a lot of those guys on the field today getting that opportunity. Down to the 32 now for the Bulldogs in Bison territory. Nick feels the pressure. Throws the football, has the completion far side, the completion by Burroughs. Great job by Nick to avoid all that pressure and then be able to keep complete the pass. And this is where he's making those, those necessary progressions forward because normally he would have taken off and run with the football, but you saw him keep his eyes downfield and find a receiver open for five yards. Burroughs, that's his 10th catch of the season. He's a playmaker for them. Second and six, ball in the 28. Opening drive for South Carolina State. Key game here in the MEAC with three team tied for second in the conference. Swing out pass out of the backfield. James down the sidelines, a penalty marker down as he was knocked out at the three yard line. What a great play to get the ball to James. Almost took it to a house. We'll have to wait on the penalty as he was knocked out at the three. What a missed opportunity right there by the linebacker, number 42, Greg Hoyd. His job was to be that contained defender. He got over there late and gave the lane to the running back to where he was able to get downfield and pick up yards and chunks. So penalty on South Carolina State. Burroughs called with holding, so they got the wide receiver holding downfield, and that'll take away this big run by James, and you see it right there on your screen. Burroughs number one with the hold. So a second and four. For South Carolina State threatening on homecoming here at Howard. There's a whistle with 10.52 to go first quarter. to reset the game clock here at Green Stadium. Rick Warney, our referee of this MEAC crew this afternoon. South Carolina is doing a great job. South Carolina State, I'm sorry, is doing a great job controlling the tempo of this game already. They're starting to dictate what's going on up front. That's what they do. That's what they did in that Morgan State game. They needed that win. They were 0-4. They needed to get their first win, and they went into Baltimore, and they dictated that tempo. To give to Jenkins up the middle. He has the first down across the 20 yard line down to the 19. Jenkins, 5'11, 200 pounds. Watch this defensive front. They were able to break the first wave, and no one made the tackle in the backfield. All four defenders were back there, right there in position to make a play. This is a great job by Darius Jenkins breaking through that first wave and picking up the first down. First and 10. Nick keeps it after the fake to Jenkins. Nick around the outside gets out of bounds at the 15-yard line. And what you're seeing now is a version of, of triple option football where your defense, as athletic as they are, have to remain disciplined. You see right there, Zamon Robinson, number 40, on the outside, getting sucked inside with that fake. And so now you start to see Howard bring in a new wave of defenders. But with all that athleticism, you still have to remain disciplined. That's what's being tough to do right now for, for the Bison in South Carolina. So he's doing a great job of dictating. Second and five for the Bulldogs from the 15-yard line. It's like a hockey shift with all those new players coming in <laughs> for the Howard defense on the second and five. Nick, pitch to Jenkins. Right side, tackled from behind, but he breaks a tackle, stays on his feet, and is eventually taken down after a short game. 
you know, the first guy didn't get him, but enough guys to hold him up till they got some help on the Bison defense. And, and that was textbook right there because you saw one guy was responsible for the quarterback and Robinson was responsible for the pitch guy. He didn't make the tackle, but he slowed down the play where his defenders came in and helped him out and cleaned it up. Third and four from the 14 for the Bulldogs. Bison showing some pressure, stepping up to the line of scrimmage. Nick looks over to the sideline. Change the play. James in the backfield next to him. Nick's going to run the football up the middle. Has a little crease inside the 10-yard line to the 5. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Tyrese Nick. That's his sixth rushing touchdown of the season. And the Bulldogs strike first on the 14-yard touchdown by Nick. This first drive was dominated up front along the line of scrimmage by the Bulldogs. And that's right, that right there is what you want to see from a young football team that's growing up. Tyrese Nick has had his way with this defense so far in this ball game. Howard has to really get on that sideline, regroup, and try to find ways to have success. Other than playing disciplined defense, he may have to start to send extra, but great opening series right there for Tyree Snick in that Bulldog offense. Dylan Brinson in for the extra point. It's good, and South Carolina strikes first. 14-yard touchdown by their quarterback, Tyree Snick, and it's 7-0 South Carolina State. Homecoming at Howard University, including some of the alumni. That was an exciting performance they had in the pregame. Exciting start for the Bulldogs. South Carolina State long 12 play drive ended on a 14 yard touchdown run by their quarterback Tyrese Nick. See what the Bison can do. Just cover that up at the 10 yard line. The wet football, the wet turf, how will that play a role today, Emory? It's going to be hard for guys to get in and out of their breaks pretty quickly. We were on that field earlier in the, in the ball game or before the game. We saw how much, you know, water was on the field as far as like puddles are concerned. Let's take a look at the Howard Bison offense led by Kalen Newton, the sophomore quarterback. Last game here at Green Stadium at five first half touchdowns against Delaware State. They got a great game last week from Pedro Parsons running the football. And of course, Ezard and Anthony, the wide receivers, are outstanding. Both one and two in the MEAC in different categories wide receiver wise. And there's a look at Kalen Newton getting an opportunity. First and ten from the 20. Newton with the pitch. Worked the ball to Parson, who had the big game last week. Good first down run, 12-yard pickup, and Matt moves the sticks. South Carolina State's defense, eighth in the MEAC, giving up about 429 yards. They only have three sacks this season. They have 10 interceptions, but this is a work in progress, this South Carolina defense. Newton will keep it himself. Plenty of running room. Newton has the first down and more, and a 13-yard pickup by Kalen Newton. And another first down for this go-go offense. Yeah, it's interesting because both defensive lines are having issues as far as finding the quarterback and getting off blocks. And you talk about a defensive tackle that is going to be playing on Sunday's big number 76 for South Carolina State. Paul McKeever is one to keep an eye on. He was very disruptive against Morgan State. Newton fakes the pitch, spins, and then falls forward for two yards. Like a magician there with the ball. Spinning around. Newton with a ball fake. Kind of looked like a <laughs> point guard in basketball. It is basketball season. It is. You know how I love my college basketball. Three-yard gain, second and seven for the go-go offense, Howard Bison. They like to go with a lot of different backs, but Parson with that back. Big second half last week gets the carry, gets close to a first down, but there's two penalty markers down. We'll have to wait and see what Rick Warney and the crew come up with. Penalty on South Carolina State. They're averaging about 54 yards per game penalties. It's the second lowest in the MEAC. So Coach Buddy Pugh's team does a good job of not hurting themselves with penalties, but that time they do. And the Bison are now set up in Bulldog territory, trying to answer South Carolina's first score of the game. Newton from the shotgun, keeping himself. Gets a couple, and they'll take those type of three, four-yard runs by their quarterback on first downs. In the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of different running backs with Renoso and Dorsey and Parson and the senior, Brannon. Second and seven with a 34. Newton is sacked. Only the 
fourth sack of the season by South Carolina State, and Ford comes up and makes the sack. That's his first sack of the season. Just the fourth for the Bulldogs. Newton was sacked six times last week by the Morgan State defense. Newton sacked here. And move forward right there. Had a big game against Morgan State when we saw them last. And again, if you're going to stop the, the spread option, the spread attack, you have to dominate right down the middle. And he did a great job there getting back there and getting pressure. Newton to throw the football. Going deep. And the ball is intercepted in the end zone. It's a great job right there by the Kobe Durant. That's his second interception on the season. He's second on the team in tackles. And that's one thing I like about South Carolina State's defense is that they take the ball away. And you have opportunities like this one-on-one. -on -one, you have to convert. Did a great job right there. Durant did a great job going up and getting that football. He played that football like he was the receiver, more so than the alley who we've seen make play after play for this offense in the passing game. So Durant with his second interception and the 11th interception for this Bulldogs defense. So they don't get a lot of sacks, but they get a lot of interceptions. They have 11 now in this season. Newton was picked off twice last week in the Morgan State game. He throws an interception here, and the Bulldogs have the football back with the 7-0 lead. Much better effort right there defensively by Howard uh, getting off a block and making a stop in the backfield. But that's the type of play South Carolina State has, has to make in this ball game if they want to win. They have to turn the ball over against this explosive offense. They had a 12-play drive in their first offensive series that turned into a 14-yard touchdown. And here going up top. Almost turned it right back over. Nick's pass looking for Baxley and well defended. The Bison almost came up with a turnover of their own there. Freeland on coverage. Well, he had the free play. The guy jumped off sides. So I don't mind him taking a shot deep down the field. But the receivers have to be in tune, too, and, and start to go fly down the field to try to get that home run ball. So after the interception by Kalen Newton, his reaction to that interception. Showing that he's upset. Second and seven from the 23 for the Bulldogs. Nick pitches it to Jenkins. Great job by the power defense. They played that pitch textbook defensive read there by Freeland. That's the second big play in the alley right there by Ty Freeland, the free safety whose job is to defend the alley. You see right here on the replay just flying up and run support, making a stop once again. Third and eight now, 5.50 to go first quarter. South Carolina State trying to take advantage of the Kalen Newton interception. The 7-0 lead. Caldwell in motion for the Bulldogs. Here comes the pressure. Nick gets it off. Has a completion down to the 45-yard line to Will Verun. Vereen with the catch. Vereen catches it at the 45-yard line. That's Vereen's 10th catch of the season. It's a heck of a throw right there by Tyree Snake. This is man coverage. They were in cover one man free. He did a great job finding the open guy, finding the leverage, and throwing right to the inside, allowing the receiver to go low and make the reception. Nick to Vereen sets him up for the first and ten. James takes the ball in the Bison territory and an 11-yard pickup and a first down. Back-to-back -back first downs for this Bulldog offense who's feeling it here with a 7-0 lead. James straight ahead moves the pile and a penalty marker comes down after a 7-yard run by James. We keep referencing the, the Morgan State game because that was three weeks ago when we saw South Carolina State play and what we didn't see in that ball game is the progression in the passing game like we see here today. Nick was 8 of 23 for 133 yards. Second and seven from the 42. James falls across the 35 yard line. Just shy of the first down. Yeah, Nick has definitely improved on his passing. 787 yards coming into this game, eighth in the MIAC. 
Now, he doesn't have to throw for 300 yards a game, but when they ask you to make a play, he's making them, and that's why you're seeing them have some success today offensively. Jenkins, very close to the first down. It'll depend on the spot right at the close to the 35-yard line. Should be enough for a first. They might have to measure. I think I say he's short. That was a good stick right there by the backer. And, and finally, starting to see Howard's the mat and make a play at the line of scrimmage. See right here on the replay. Running back trying to get downhill. Just a great job setting up shop at the line of scrimmage, maintaining that wall and bringing him down for no game. 29% on fourth downs this season for South Carolina State. Two of seven. Big fourth and one from the 36 coming up for the Bulldogs. Nick, will he keep it himself? He's going backwards and he slips and falls on the wet turf. It'll be a turnover on downs. Howard defense forced Nick backwards and then he slipped on the wet turf. We'll step aside with 3.30 to go. The Bison will have the football when we, have, when we come back with South Carolina State with a 7-0 lead. Artificial intelligence helps us change the way we feed the world. The Network. Homecoming at Howard in Washington, D.C. And the Bison defense did the job. On fourth and one by South Carolina State. Defense held them. Kalen Newton will get a second opportunity. Newton with 10 interceptions now. He threw one last offensive possession. Parsons straight ahead. We talked about this a little bit, Emery, the way they ran the ball in the second half. Their offensive line might be good enough to really commit to the run, but that's hard to do when you have Kalen Newton and Ezard and Anthony. Newton outside. Fancy move by Newton to avoid the tackle. Gets into very close to a first down. There you see the vision of Newton going on the outside. They, you saw Dedrick Parsons on that first down run do a great job of getting downhill. And like we said before, we don't have the the luxury of having a bunch of backs at your disposal, you want to get them involved. And that's really what the go-go offense is about. It's about going fast, but also really dominating up front. They do, they do, they've done so, I'm sorry, with their ground game. Pew, short yardage specialist, but not this time. Great job of the South Carolina State defense. Tackle for a loss on the Pew run. So a fourth down coming up, and they'll have to punt the football back to South Carolina State. Talk about a heck of a job right there by South Carolina State. Big number 95, Cordell Brown, the senior out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, 6'2", 260, are just blowing up the offensive front, getting in the backfield and causing disruption. And one of the rare times we've seen Howard punt the football. They'll have to punt it away here on the fourth and three from the 46. Boys back to receive the punt for the Bulldogs. Takes a bounce and goes into the end zone. So South Carolina State and Buddy Pugh's team has a 7-0 lead, and they have the football back when we get back from Washington, D.C. The award across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Third time's a charm. found at Howard University at Green Stadium. Some of the alumni here. A little rain not stopping the homecoming activities here at HU. Some folks watching from high above. South Carolina State with a 7-0 lead. Tyrese Nick with the 14-yard touchdown on their first offensive chance. Flood made the stop, no gain, second and 10 coming up for the Bulldogs. You're seeing a lot of watching right now within the front seven of Howard because of what South Carolina State has been able to do running the football. Nick throws it, the ball gets batted at the line of scrimmage. Good hands by the Howard defense, then knocked out away. Flood getting it done again from his defensive end position. And he had Quan Caldwell streaking down the middle of the field, no safety back deep. That would have been a touchdown, but great job staying active at the line of scrimmage right there, getting your big paw up there and knocking it to the ground. Otherwise, Caldwell was going to be off to the races on that reception. Isaiah Flood, the senior from Richmond, Virginia, with a couple of big plays defensively already. Third and 10 from the 20 for South Carolina State. Nick engineered a 12-play drive 
Open the game for the Bulldogs. That 7-0 lead. Nick will keep it himself. Follows his blockers to the outside and tackled. Back got to the line of scrimmage, and that's as far as he would get. Another great defensive play by Allison. I know you're high on him. His 42nd tackle of the season. Robinson made by setting the edge and forcing Tyrese Nick to bounce outside where he was able to come in there and make that tackle. And that's what we're talking about when you want to play great team defense. Great series right here by the Howard Bison on both ends of defense. Simone Robinson last week, eight tackles, two tackles for a loss and a one and a half sacks. Co-defensive player of the week in the MEAC for his performance against Morgan State. And this punt by Petaway gets shanked and goes out of bounds. It'll be great field position for the Howard offense. Coach London. Delta Hotels by Marriott, Baltimore's Hunt Valley, the Maryland and Mid-Atlantic region lodging headquarters destination for visiting college football teams and fans. Right off of Interstate 83, the Delta Hotels by Marriott, Baltimore, Hunt Valley. They have everything you need. Call them today or book online for a reservation. 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Good opportunity for the Howard offense with a great field position starting on the Bulldog 37-yard line for Newton. Newton throws, has the completion. Out of the backfield, Pugh. You know how much I like Kazon Pugh, the big back, 6'2", 240. Big back with quick feet right there, getting out in space and, and making plays, and that's a great way for Howard to close out this quarter, try to build some momentum moving on to the second. Pugh from Aliquip to Pennsylvania. Straight ahead to Parson. Parson gets a couple. He was stopped by Johnson for South Carolina State. It's a good job right there inside, just clogging up gaps up front. And one thing you're going to get from a coach, but if you squad, is great defensive line play and great O-line play consistently. And that's the final play of the first quarter. South Carolina State with a 7-0 lead. But Howard has the football in the red zone. We get back for the second quarter. Sports Fever Television Network, MEAC, College Football Game of the Week. Night cheerleaders, homecoming at Howard University. The Bison down 7-0 as we start the second quarter. And a second and nine for Kalen Newton from the 20. Parson. That's Dorsey getting in, getting an opportunity. Fresh legs. I love this power formation from Howard. You're talking about two backs to one side, two tight ends to another side, just running low power right there, getting to the outside, but a great open field tackle right there by South Carolina State. Otherwise, that would have popped for a touchdown. Dorsey picked up six yards. This time, Parson gets the carry. Patient tries to find a hole and works his way closer to that first down marker, but just going to be short, so a fourth and two coming up with a Howard Bison after that Parson run. And they don't have a problem being aggressive and going for it because they have the ultimate X factor in Kalen Newton, the mobile quarterback back there, and his ability to make decisions on the fly is what's been most impressive about his game so far in these two years he's been at Howard. Howard just 23%, 5 of 22 on fourth downs, fourth and three, on the 13-yard line for Newton. Has the completion. It's going to be short, I think, of the first down. So Ali made the catch, but it's short. Wow. They needed three yards, and they only got two on the Newton completion to Jordan Ali. Well, pre-snap, they gave them the look that they wanted, but post-snap, South Carolina State was able to adjust and get out there in the fat flat pretty quickly and make that stop. Scott Robinson, the defensive back freshman from Rock Hill, South Carolina, flying out there for his responsibility and making that stop at the line of scrimmage. So you throw a pass for no game. Coach Pugh has to be thrilled the way his South Carolina State defense has played here in the first quarter on the road. Absolutely. They've done a great job up front and also in the secondary. Hard to believe that the South Carolina State team started the season 0-4, Emory. They have approved since conference play has started. Yeah, we talked about this before the broadcast, how South Carolina State is not as bad as their record may indicate. You can make a case, like we said earlier, for them to be 5-0 and in MEAC play. So this is a young, improving football team, and we're seeing it out here today against the Bison. Greer with a one-yard pickup on the carry, second and nine. 
Tyrese Nick, the sophomore quarterback, leads the MEAC in rushing. So Greer again, the redshirt freshman. Has three touchdowns this season. They use him in short yardage situations. But as you mentioned before, much like Howard, they have the rotations of the backs with James, Jenkins, Cummings, and Greer. And then, of course, the ability to have a running quarterback like Tyrese Nick. He's, again, the ultimate X factor, making it an 11 on 11 game. Third and six passing situation for the Bulldogs here. A couple of wide receivers, top of your screen. Now Howard's going back to that single high look. They got burned last time. Let's see if they shift out of it before the snap. Burroughs is a dangerous receiver, but Nick will keep it himself as the first down and more breaks a tackle across the 30 yard line and down to the 32. And a 17 yard pickup by Tyrese Nick and a first down for South Carolina State. Well, there's two schools of weight thoughts to look at this. One, if you're going single high, you're probably going man in coverage, but underneath you expect to have that eight guy in the box and he wasn't there. And that's where Tyrese Nick was able to exploit for a big game. Rick Warren, our official, got Rick's name correct now. He made the call there. Penalty on South Carolina State. Again, they do a great job of not getting a lot of penalties. Number two in the MEAC for the fewest penalties in the conference. Move them back five yards, first and 15. The 27. Nick throws out of the backfield, has the completion to Greer. Let's head down to the field to Ryan Pierce. Ryan? Well, the Howard defense doing exactly what defensive coordinator Vince Brown wants him to do. After that first touchdown by Nick, Brown was hammering his team, saying you can't let him get to the outside. They've stopped them over the past couple drives. Let's see what they do here. Yeah, you don't want to anger defensive coordinator Vince Brown. He played for the New England Patriots for eight seasons before retiring in 95. All proer. Also was the three seasons at UConn as the co-defensive coordinator. Second year here as the defensive coordinator for Coach London. Second and 13. Nick has the completion at midfield and a first down. Threw it in the double coverage. An outstanding job. Caldwell to make that catch. Good concentration by Caldwell because there was a lot of Bison jerseys around. But he took a shot right there at the freshman defensive back, Jalen Smith, who was in good position, just has to make a play. Can't watch the guy all in the reception. You got to get your hand in there and knock it away. 22-yard pickup on the catch. Nick goes across the 45-yard line. That's where he was stopped. Again, Tick, tick, tick. Time of possession. Ball control, right? That is the South Carolina State offense. Well, they want to keep it close to the vest, and they're doing a great job in controlling the pace and the tempo of this ball game. And that's the situation right there where you just let a mental mistake become a physical one and jump offside. You're standing right over the football, and defensive coaches hate that because you're looking dead at the football, and you jump offside. Our defense... Commits the mental mistake. It'll bring up right down in distance here for South Carolina State to gamble. Try to get the ball down the field with a 7-0 lead. Tyrese Nick with the handoff up the middle and a lot of room. Inside the five-yard line goes Omar Cummings with a burst of speed down to the four-yard line. There was plenty of room, huge hole for Omar to run through. Well, see, that's the thing right there that he has that's different than everyone else. Electrifying speed and top-notch acceleration. He was able to run right down the A-gap and burst through the secondary and gets him down inside the five-yard line. Got all the way down to the two. They give it back to Cummings from two yards out. And Cummings in the end zone for the South Carolina State touchdown. Omar Cummings with two big runs, one to take him to the two and one to finish off the drive to give the Bulldogs six. They love Omar Cummings because of what he can do inside with that speed. We saw him against Morgan State have that game-winning touchdown. Again, a guy that can get outside and break you off with his speed but also run down in between the tackles and find pay dirt. So again, South Carolina State is coming into Howard and playing their game better than Howard is right now. Penalty on the extra point on South Carolina State. We'll have to retry. 
Omar Cummings, two big runs as South Carolina State up by two scores. And we're 10 minutes into the second quarter. And right now, Howard just looks flat on both sides of the ball. They just don't look clean offensively or defensively. And right now, South Carolina State is taking full advantage. Bredson on for the extra point try for the Bulldogs. The extra point is good. South Carolina State has a 14-0 lead. Omar Cummings, Tiny's Nick getting it done for the Bulldogs. South Carolina State up 14-0. Hey, we said 60 minutes. We ain't done. As they renew their rivalry with the Bills. Monday Night Football, Patriots Bills, tonight at 8.15 on ESPN. Cummings gets his first rushing touchdown of the season. 10-play, 88-yard drive, took 3.27 off the clock. And it's a 14-0 South Carolina State lead over the Howard Bison on homecoming here at Howard. Ali on the return. Across the 20, down to the 23-yard line. Cambria Hotel is a proud sponsor of Howard University Athletics. The hotel is the closest to the university and offers a discount lodging rate for all Howard University events. For the preferred rate, please visit Howard Athletics site and click on the logo or call the hotel directly. 202-299-1188. Cambria Hotel, a proud sponsor of Howard University Athletics. Kayla Newton, this Howard go-go offense needs to start getting things going. Run up the middle goes nowhere. South Carolina State's defense, they have some big guys in that line of scrimmage and the linebacker position as well to blow up plays. Tyrell Goodwin made this play. He was able to hold his own at the point, get off the block, and corral the running back in the back. Though. Big number 97 right there doing a great job up front defensively. Second and 12 after a two-yard loss on that run play by Howard. Newton, here comes some pressure. They sacked him once today. And incomplete. Was looking for Iggy Reynoso out of the backfield. Newton had some Bulldogs to contend with, though, chasing him around. Yeah, he was getting frustrated back there. And, and if you're Newton, you can't allow yourself to get frustrated. I know it's tough right now because you're down 14 nothing, but they're looking for you to be that guy to help rally the troops and galvanize his football team, this offense, to get them in position to put points up on the board. Third and 12. Bulldogs showing some pressure. He can't get it all back in one play, so they have to find ways to really just stack back-to-back -back positive plays against, a, a, against one another. They keep it on the ground to Dorsey. Nothing there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage, and original line of scrimmage, and that's it. So they'll have to punt the football away again. I don't think I've seen Howard's offense go three and out as much as they have here today. Yeah, that, that right there was just, you don't see those type of plays in this go-go offense. You expect to see a vertical shot at some point, but they just haven't had the opportunity to go deep down the field. And you have to credit South Carolina State's defense for getting the job done. Boys back to receive the punt. By Moore on the punt. Moore's about punt. Bounces at the 45-yard line and falls dead at the 44. That's where the Bulldogs will have it when we come back. South Carolina State with a 14-0 lead over Howard. 60 minutes, we ain't done. As they renew their rivalry with the Bills. Monday Night Football, Patriots-Bills, tonight at 8.15 on ESPN. You're watching MEAC Football on the Sports Fever Television Network. Well, it was a season ago where Howard spoiled South Carolina State's homecoming with a 28-20 victory. Howard snapped a 15-year drought against South Carolina State, winning that game last year, dating back to 2002. Tough run straight ahead here. And he was whistled and stopped in Bison territory at the 46-yard line. Freeland was trying to grab that football and go the opposite direction, but you see Omar coming to those two big runs last drive. He's feeling some momentum, running hard and keeping his legs going, not going down. 
picked up nine yards. Second and one for South Carolina State with a 14-0 lead. That was some big win for Howard. Again, a 15-year drought. They have not beaten South Carolina State. And last year they did it spoiling home down, uh, homecoming down at South Carolina State. Nick to Cummings. Cummings has the first down and more. Powers his way to the 42-yard line. Good dose of Omar Cummings with his Bulldog offense. Well, Isaiah Flood shot through there in a nice little run blitz they call right here, but he has to make that play. Stop Cummings right there in the back door. But again, when you miss that opportunity, South Carolina State is able to convert and pick up the first down. So Howard has tried to counter, but the Bulldogs have had an answer. Coach London's team riding a two-game win streak, looking to make it three in a row, but they need to come back. Nick's pass incomplete down the center of the field. Second down coming up. Flag. Penalty marker down. And the hit that Nick took. Take a look at it here, Emery. Whoops. Uh, you could chalk that up to being slippery out there. On the <laughs> or, <laughs> or that class he took in Hollywood. In the exactly. That was a heck of a job. Now, I was a theater <laughs> minor in college, and I, I can appreciate that thespian move right there about Tyrese Nick. Yeah, it's a great job by a sophomore quarterback to have the awareness of possibly, you know, after making that incomplete pass, to tack on some yards with a penalty. Again, Howard's defense just looks flat. They just look lethargic out there, and credit South Carolina State's offensive line for not letting up and just continue to lean on that defensive front. That's, that's why they're having a lot of success running the football. Great field position again for the Bulldogs. Now first in 10 from the Howard 28-yard line with a two-touchdown lead. Cummings in the backfield with Nick. Nick will keep it himself from the outside and pitches it forward and incomplete. Interesting play there by Nick. Maybe some miscommunication. Well, he was trying to throw it away. He was still parallel or behind the line of scrimmage, so it still counts as an incomplete pass. But Ruff was tempted to throw that flag, but he saw where he was on the field and, and called it correctly by not throwing the flag on, on that play. But... Howard had another opportunity right there to make a play in the backfield and just didn't make that play. As Zamone Robinson, he has to make that play. There's a lot of athleticism at the second level. You expect those guys to get home and convert if you're Coach Mike London. Robinson, only a freshman from Silver Spring, Maryland. Second and 10. Coming straight ahead. Gets two yards, and that's it. Leonard made the stop for the Bison. Tyree Leonard's a guy from Jonesboro, Georgia, getting in there and showing some aggressiveness, grabbing him and wrapping him down to the ground. That's the type of aggressiveness you, you want to see. Defensively, if you're Howard, you have to start to match the level of intensity that South Carolina State is bringing to the table. Third and seven, the 25. Penalty marker is down on the field. Even though our graphic says South Carolina, it's South Carolina State, folks. They're playing just as aggressive of defense as the Gamecocks would in the SEC. So that's why we're seeing the type of style of play we're seeing today from the Bulldogs. They just have to make sure to match that level of intensity on the other side of the ball when Howard gets to rock. So that'll move South Carolina State Bulldogs back five yards. And a third and 12 now for Tyrese Nick. See how it goes to a two safety look. Let's see if they can condense the, in the middle of the field and to read those options in the passing game. Nick to pass. Goes corner. Corner of the end zone and incomplete. Looking for Baxley. An incomplete pass and fourth down coming up for the South Carolina State Bulldogs and Coach Pugh. That was a great defensive play right there by Howard. You saw both. Sideline. They played the hash marks, turned toward the sideline, and was able to bracket those outside receivers while still being in great position to take away the inside routes, which made the throw very tough for Tyrese Nick, which is why you're seeing them go for it here on fourth and about 12. They're kicking a field goal. They're going for a field goal attempt. 47-yard attempt by Dylan Bredson, his longest, 39 yards, two of four. Bredson's kick is up and good. His longest kick of the season. Good from 47 yards for Dylan Bredson. South Carolina State adds to their lead 17-0. Shutting out the Bison on homecoming in Washington, D.C. Coach London shaking his head.
John sandwich he makes. You should see him with Capicola. Freaky fresh, freaky fast, Jimmy John's. Now try your favorite on our new nine grain wheat sub. Wheat yeah, freak yeah. So a 46 yard field goal officially by Dylan Brenson, his longest of his career. Previous long, 39. Now three of five field goals this season. South Carolina State with a 17 nothing lead on homecoming. Here comes Alley on the return. Face mask. Couple penalty markers down as he gets across the 30 yard line. There's definitely a face mask. By the 20. I've never seen Green Stadium this quiet. And it's homecoming. It's homecoming. A lot of alumni here and it is very quiet. Because this Howard offense is not used to being shut out. And here's another look at Redson's 46 yarder. Longest of his career. Look at the offensive line's reaction. They're like, oh, yeah, he did it. <laughs> they were just as surprised as the coaching staff was that that kick went in. Let's see what the bison of this offense could get things going. Number one in the MEAC total offense, rushing and passing. 506 yards of total offense coming in. And it doesn't look like that, the way things are going here for Kalen Newton and the, the Bison so far in this game. Newton, three of five passing today. One interception. Second and seven from midfield. Newton steps up in the pocket and gets hit as he went to throw the football. It's interesting. They had one safety back deep that was tilted toward the short side of the field or the near side of the field as you're watching this on TV. So you had one-on-one -on, -one on the back side, and Newton instantly went to the side where the safety was. Probably should have gone to the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the far side of the field. Now, I don't know if the coverage or the, the uh, play call brought him to where he had to throw it to this area of the field, but there was one-on-one -on, -one on the backside, no safety help, and you have two of the dynamic receivers, more dynamic receivers in the conference. You got to take that chance when they had the same look once again. How about Howard with only 91 yards of total offense? South Carolina State 204. Ball completed to Anthony for a first down. Kyle Anthony want to get Anthony and Ezard going. That's Anthony's first catch of the game. Game by. Kalen Newton. They're just going over the middle of the field to your big time target, getting him involved. Give straight ahead, not much there. For Pew. Kazon Pugh is their big back in this offense. They have a bunch of other guys that are built the same way 5'10, 185, and Pew is 6'2, 240. Gives them that power on the inside with their ground game. Under five minutes to go before the half. Parson straight up the middle, plenty of running room. He may take it to the house, and he does. The Howard Bison are on the board. Big second half, feed me more. Mr. Parson with the 35-yard touchdown. The level of difficulty to make that move running full speed going downhill on this playing surface is impressive. You see a great job right, right there by Parson. See right here in the hole, make that guy miss and just explode down Main Street into the end zone. Just a great job overall. That's how you want to answer if you're Howard. Get back to basics, running the football, finding creases in between those defensive linemen, and get yourself back into this ball game. This is the type of answer they needed before halftime. Joseph's extra point is up and good. Parson at 148 yards and two touchdowns in the second half last week in the win over Morgan State. Parson sparks the Howard offense with a 35-yard touchdown for the Howard Bison. Dietrich Parson was hot last week in the second half. And he gets the Howard offense on the board with the 35-yard touchdown last week. Miak, Offensive player of the week. 148 yards and two touchdowns a week ago and they come from behind win over Morgan State. Dietrich Parsons gets Howard on the board for the first time here today at homecoming.
449 to go before the half. Seventeen seven lead for the visiting Bulldogs. Joseph kicked out of bounds. 125 years of Howard University football. Celebrating that on the sidelines. A lot of alumni back from Howard University football. It's a long time, man. 1893 to now. And, you know, you just talk about the tradition rich programs here in the MEAC and HBCU football as a whole. Howard is one of the, the premier programs, and it's good to see these guys celebrated by slapping that big logo on the side of their helmet. They're playing good football this year. They're competitive. They're in contention for the celebration. Well, they have a lot of positives going on with this program. In 125 years, that's up there with the big dogs. South Carolina State will try to answer the Howard touchdown. 4.49 to go before the break. First and 10 from their own 45-yard line. Caldwell in motion for Nick. Hand off Jones. James. James. 10 yard pickup and a first down. James Gear. It's one thing that they have about with Jenkins, James, and Greer and Cummings. All three, all four backs kind of possess a different kind of skill. James gets through that hole quick. First and ten, Nick keeps it himself. Picks up four yards. Coming up next week could be a big game if Howard could take business, take care of business today. Fam U makes the trip up from Florida. They'll be in the nation's capital to face Howard. We have that game for you next week. That could be a huge game as far as who's going to go represent the MEAC in the Celebration Bowl. That's next week, one o'clock on the Sports Fever Television Network. Fam U and the Howard Bison. Second and 10. What's going on right here with Howard's defense is the fact that they're not occupying those interior gaps, which is why these backs are having the ability to hit the hole at full speed. You see right here, Daytron James is flying through that hole at full speed. There's no one to stop that progress. Your defensive lineman hat, everyone is responsible for a gap. And right now, no one is in the B gap, the C gap. No one is doing what they're supposed to do up front, which is why you're seeing Howard get gassed on the ground. So they go with Omar Cummings. James is like a rocket when he gets through that hole. And what is interesting about James is the fact that he is listed at 5'10", 201, but he looks just as big as Kazon Pugh on the other side. He's a big back, and when you have guys like Cummings and also James with speed like that, it's impressive. Second and six, Nick, short pass, hit immediately and no gain. Well played by Brian Cook, the defensive back, who made the big plays last week in the Morgan State win. It's the first time we called his name all day, and that's a guy flying up and run support, making that play, getting off a block and just making a good form tackle, bringing him to the ground. Maybe that's a spark that Howard needs defensively to show some fight on this side of the football. I think South Carolina State is, is kind of having their way with this Bison defense. Caldwell made the catch, but for no yards. Third down, third and six from the 29. Bulldogs again in Bison territory. They've been in Bison territory most of this first half. 2.20 to go before the half. Nick's going to need a timeout, some confusion. And we'll step aside as well. Homecoming at Howard. The Bison have some work to do. They're trailing 17-7. Football on the Sports Fever Television Network. 2.18 to go before the half. South Carolina State with a 17-7 lead over Howard. Big third down for the sophomore quarterback, Tyrese Nick and the Bulldogs. Nick, 6 of 10 passing, 105 yards, 36 yards rushing, and a touchdown. Open the scoring, a long 12 play drive to open this game here at Howard. It's a big third down here for Howard. Cummings in the backfield next to Nick. Now steps to the opposite side. 
Nick's going to run it, trying to run for the first down. Penalty marker is down. Nick short of the first down, and we'll have to wait to see what the penalties about. Might be on South Carolina State. There's an injured Howard Bison player down on the turf. It's a good bit of chess match going on here between these two offensive and defensive teams. So a holding penalty on South Carolina State, and that'll move them back. What you saw on that on that particular play was South Carolina State expand the formation and try to get those defensive backs out the box and make it a numbers game. And that's why you saw Tyree Snig run downhill because he had a reduced box. He had favorable numbers. But you have to like how Howard was able to get off blocks and really balance out those that number disadvantage they had and make the stop. But it's all for not. They pushed him back on the holding penalty. Now they really can pin their ears back and get up to the quarterback. Simone Robinson, the freshman, injured on the play, walks off the field. South Carolina State 31% on third downs this season. Third and 18. Nick's going to run it himself. He gets hit the 35 yard line and a fourth down coming up for South Carolina State. That's a great job defensively by Howard. Ty Freeland, once again, he came from Pennsylvania to fly up that alley and make that stop. Otherwise, Tyrese Nick would still be running. So, this is a great individual effort by Freeland, who has had a really good game today making plays in space. And Howard calls timeout with 1.53 to go before the half. When you want barbecue taste you remember from home, go to D.C. Smokehouse. Dry rub brisket and more. Smoke for 18 hours. D-City Smokehouse can handle all your event needs from serving the VIP guests of Howard Athletics to serving the VP guests in your own home. D City Smokehouse, located on 203 Florida Avenue. Three so fourth down on the way for South Carolina State. Petaway will punt the football away, standing at midfield. goes out of the in the end zone it's for a touchback so let's see what Howard can do this go-go offense who has struggled here in the first half against this South Carolina State defense 147 to go down 17-7 117 is a lot of time we were here a few weeks ago <laughs> against Delaware State and they had 41 points in that first half and Kayla Newton that day had five first half touchdowns. They scored in a hurry. Maybe that's why this crowd here is not worried because they've seen their offense do this before and they have a great opportunity to put points up on the board for that. Newton will keep it himself. Falls forward for a couple of yards. It's hard to believe that Jaquez Ezzard does not have a catch. Yeah, you're right. Between Ezzard and Anthony having one reception in between the two of them and that's not what we're used to seeing from this Howard offense, but we are used to seeing that South Carolina State defense do a great job on the back end. Newton goes up top. The ball is intercepted. The 49-yard line picked off by the South Carolina State defense. And Alex Brown with his second interception of the season and the second interception of the day thrown by Kalen Newton. If I could bottle this up and sell it as coaching clinic tape, it would make a million dollars. This was perfect technique from the line of scrimmage. He was able to wall off the receiver, turn around the last possible moment, and pick off the football. So not only did he shrink the field, he was able to turn and find the football and then make the interception. That's just a great defensive play by South Carolina State. Attended receiver Jordan Ali. Both of Newton's interceptions today, he was targeting Ali. Newton picked off twice last week and picked off twice here today by South Carolina State's defense. So Nick will run the football. 115 to go before the half and a 17-7 lead. You're right. They went to Ali on, on both of those deep balls. And it's funny because he is listed as a running back, but like you said, they're moving him more so to receiver because he is a big play threat. But South Carolina State has corners that could match up against anyone in the conference. 
Nick out of the backfield has the completion to Cummings, who makes a spin move and gets the first down yardage needed, 11-yard pickup. Omar Cummings spin move and a first down for the Bulldogs. He hit that circle button right there. It was spin off both defenders. Again, I just like the confidence that you're seeing right now from South Carolina State. They're playing with a swagger, a certain edge to them. It's almost like it's their homecoming as opposed to Howard. So Howard has to, they, they have to answer the call. Otherwise, they're in, they're in position here to really take a step back as far as what they want to accomplish moving forward. Coming up next week, FAMU comes to Howard and FAMU undefeated in conference play in the MEAC. They are 4-0 and playing tonight against Morgan State. And then you have North Carolina A&T Howard and North Carolina Central all tied at second with one loss. And then Bethune-Cookman and South Carolina State tied for third at 2-2. Two and two. But that could be a huge game if Howard's able to come back here this afternoon on homecoming. The rain has finally stopped and it's actually got a little brighter skies here in Washington, D.C. Nick, the throw on first down, has the completion to Will Verone. Vereen with the catch and another first down. Vereen, his second grab of the game. 11 catches now in the season for Will Vereen, the redshirt freshman. Stops the clock, does Nick. And Vereen is another one of those big-bodied wide receivers, 5'11", 200 pounds. And what you see in South Carolina State do with these receivers, they're bigger guys, so you get the, the football in their hands pretty quickly, and then they turn into running backs, and they're able to run after the catch really well. So it makes uh, across the board. Just like Howard's offense is very tough to match up from a speed perspective, from a physicality perspective, it's tough to match up against South Carolina State. Second and 10 from the 28. 37 seconds to go before the half. Nick with time to throw, has the completion at the 10 yard line. Caldwell with the catch. Caldwell was just sitting in the middle. Big reception here in South Carolina State is thinking of adding some more points to their 17-7 lead. Nick's gonna run it right side. Tried to string that out the best he could, but great job by the Howard defense to make sure he wasn't able to get upfield. Yeah, that was a great job by Aaron Walker, the sophomore defensive back from D.C., came right over the edge and made the, top, the tackle. But on that particular play, the play before, you see a lot of watching in the secondary. Guys are not communicating where, who was supposed to be where, and that's why you're seeing huge voids on the back end. They're giving up yards and chunks in the passing game in a most crucial situation, but... This is something that has to get adjusted at halftime. I know Coach Mike London is a, is a great defensive guy, so best believe he's going to get those adjustments made. We should see a better second half from an effort perspective from Howard. That Vereen pass from Nick was good for 18 yards and a sideline warning in South Carolina State during a timeout. <laughs> I don't know how you can get a sideline warning during a timeout, but they just did. Notice with the weather being clear now, the crowd size has increased. Yeah, they it's were all they, they were all watching somewhere dry, watching this game <laughs> on the Sports Fever television network and on ESPN3. But now they've decided, you know what, let's go out there and see this one in person. Second and goal. Nick Burroughs with the catch inside the five-yard line. And Burroughs down to the two. Clock running. They have to be careful here. They have to be alert. Five seconds, three seconds. Nick spikes it with 2.3 seconds to go before the end of the first half. I would say this is a win for Howard's defense. They nearly gave up the touchdown here on this previous pass play. Good route, good throw, good catch. See him breaking tackles, fight toward the end zone, but Howard's defense was able to step up and force a field goal. They didn't give up a touchdown. You still don't want to give up points, but solid defensive stop right there for the Bison. 20-yard attempt. Redson, it was a 46-yarder. This one is up and good, and it adds to the South Carolina State lead, the final play of the first half. South Carolina State on the road with a 27 lead over the Howard Bison on the Sports Fever Television Network, our MEAC College Football Game of the Week. 
go like this. I'm making an ass. <laughs> Today's Sports Fever College Football Game of the Week featuring the MEAC is brought to you by Howard University. Homecoming at Howard University. Visiting Bulldogs with a 20-7 lead over the Bison. We head down to the field. Ryan Pierce with a special guest. Ryan? Phil, thanks a lot. Uh, our pleasure here. Dr. Wayne Frederick, the president of Howard University, joining us on this homecoming weekend. Dr. Frederick, you graduated from Howard. What's it like to see all these former students come back and enjoy the festivities? Oh, it's great. You know, um, homecoming is kind of like a family reunion. Uh, you see in folks that I, I, I came here as a freshman 30 years ago, so this is an absolute great opportunity for everybody to reconnect and it's, it's a wonderful weekend so far. Outside of that, what are some of the activities, the football game, other stuff going on that you really enjoy? So we have something called HU Ideas that we put on on a Friday where alum and others speak about different things we're doing. I give a state at the university address on Friday. Um, the schools and colleges have open houses and of course, they're the parties. Parties are a lot of fun. I'm sure the students are really getting into it. For you, just a chance to talk with the students and talk about that Howard pride. What's that like for you? Yeah, no, it's great because, you know, when I came here 30 years ago as a 16-year-old, I knew I wanted to be a physician but didn't have an idea how I would get there. I uh, didn't have an idea of all the other things that may happen that Howard would influence. And so the ability to see alum who've been impacted like I have, as well as students who are excited, have the, their own future ahead. And then We've been increasingly having parents join us as well, so that they're actually seeing the progress. And then some of those parents are alarmed. So all around, it's a great opportunity to connect, to hear stories, and to also let people know what we're trying to do to make the university even better. My last question, Dr. Frederick, uh, getting to talk to those parents, that's got to be really beneficial for you and beneficial for the university to get that feedback. No, absolutely. And, you know, it's great to know that they're happy that their kids are here, that their kids are doing well. and. Uh, there's always all, there are always things that we want to do even better so getting their input in those ideas is also great as well dr wayne frederick president of howard university thanks for uh, joining the halftime show no, I'm not back yet. phil back to you all right thank you so much ryan we'll check some MEAC scores from around the MEAC coming up plus more it's homecoming here at howard university the bulldogs with a 27 lead loans america's largest mortgage lender On campus at Howard University, we're at the half. South Carolina State with a 20-7 lead over Howard. In the MEAC today, Nebraska taking on Bethune-Cookman. Bethune-Cookman outside of the MEAC play today. Nebraska with a 45-3 lead in the fourth quarter. In the first quarter, North Carolina State and Delaware State scoreless. And then later today at 3 o'clock, Norfolk State and Savannah State. And then at 4, Morgan State and FAMU at 4 o'clock. That's the games around the MEAC today. It's time now for the pride of Howard University. It's showtime. The Showtime Band on homecoming here at Howard.
a tribute to the Queen of Soul by the Showtime Band. The pride of Howard University. We're at the half, South Carolina State with a 20-7 lead over the Howard Bison. More from the nation's capital on our halftime show when we get back on the Sports Fever Television Network. Live on the ESPN app, presented by State Farm. You're watching me at the Sports Fever Television Network. And we're seeing something we haven't seen all day. The sun is out finally after a lot of rain all of last night and into today, right into game time. But the sun is now out. Homecoming, but the Howard Bison have some work to do as they trail South Carolina State 20 to 7. The first half, South Carolina State Bulldogs got on the board first on a big drive capped off by Tyrese Nix, 14-yard touchdown, seven plays, 53 yards. It was 7-0. Then Omar Cummings in from two yards out. It was 14-0. How about a 17-0 start for the visiting Bulldogs? Dylan Brenson, 46-yard field goal is good. 17-zip. Then Howard gets on the board with their running game. Derek Parson. Derek Parsons goes for the score of 17-7. And then right before the half, the Bulldogs. Brenson with a 20-yard field goal to make it 20-7, to and that's where we are at the half. Emery, take a look at these first-half stats and give me your thoughts. Well, first of all, the two turnovers for Howard, zero for South Carolina State. And he's down there at the penalties. Uh, four penalties for 102 yards for South Carolina State, only one for Howard, but clearly it's the zero passing yards and two turnovers. That definitely has to change uh, in this want to win if you're Howard, but South Carolina State is doing a great job on both ends of offense, as you can see. Good balance right there for the Bulldogs. So some work to do for the Howard Bison if they'd like to come back and win this game on homecoming. Second half is coming up from Washington 20 to 7. ESPN app, presented by State Farm. In the football against Morgan State, they did it on the ground last week in that come-from-behind win over the Bears. Also, South Carolina State is 4 out of 7 on third down, 0 for 5 for Howard, and also inside the red zone, they're 1 for 1. Howard hasn't even touched the red zone uh, yet in this ballgame. So South Carolina State's defense is just being a big bully here in D.C., and I love what I'm seeing from this Bulldog team that's starting to grow, grow up each and every week. Getting ready to start the second half. Again, three teams tied in second place in the MIAC. Should be exciting second half, man. I you know, you talk about this offense and how explosive it is. At some point, they have to get things going. But you have to like the fact that South Carolina State's defense came ready to play. And let's head down to the sidelines to hear from Coach London with Ryan Pierce. Ryan? Coach London, Coach, uh, down by just a couple scores in the half. What are some adjustments you want to make? Yeah, well, you know, we're not playing very well. I mean, obviously, you have two turnovers. You have uh, fourth down stops, uh, you know, that they get against us. 
So we got to wake up and understand what's trying to, what, what they're trying to do against us. So we're going to change a couple things defensively, be more aggressive with the ball offensively, and just allow us to play, play our game. We're, we're playing like we're timid or something like that. we got to play better. Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, Coach London, Ryan, thank you very much. Not happy with the way his team performed in the first half here on homecoming. He knows how big of a football game this is, is for the Bison. We're on a two-game win streak. They would love to make it three in a row because they want to be in contention for the Celebration Bowl. Coach London, his second year, last seven wins, turned the program. It started off with a bang with one of the biggest upset in college football. Went on the road and beat UNLV in Kalen Newton's first game as a back. They almost pulled that off again. They almost took care of Ohio, lost to them to open the season 38-32, and a loss to Kent State. And they beat Bethune Cookman in Indiana. A tough loss on the road at NC Central, 40-35. And then a wins over Delaware State and Morgan State the last two weeks. For South Carolina State, as I mentioned, been since 1971 that they started 0-4, but they have played very well since then. The win over Morgan State, the two-point loss to Bethune-Cookman in last week's Delaware State victory. And they had a 16-3 lead against a and as well. Second half is underway. Ali will let it go into the end zone, a touchback for the go-go offense that needs to start going. Well, here's what we've seen so far from Howard offensively, a lot of nothing. And what we have normally seen from the Bison offense is a lot of versatility. Guys getting out on the perimeter in the running game. Guys going deep down the field. Their backs getting deep down the field in the passing game. Can they find that multiplicity within their offensive attack in the second half is going to be key. Averaging 35 points a contest. That's number one in the MEAC, the most points. So they can score in a hurry. Parson. Has the one touchdown for Howard. Gets an 11-yard pickup and a first down. Maybe they'll stick to that run. They've run the ball well. They ran their way back into that ball game last week against Morgan State, and they have some game breakers in the backfield. And you want to see on defense, if South Carolina State is going to continue to be aggressive on the corners, which they were in the first half. Parson with 92 yards already rushing the football. Dodges ahead for a couple, close to the 40-yard line. Yeah, for South Carolina State, there's been two guys that's a, that are real bugaboos up front. You talk about uh, McKeever, the number 76, and number 97, Tyrell Goodwin. Both of those guys are just excellent defenders and have done a great job so far in this game, controlling the point of attack up front. Goodwin, six foot, 265 from Columbia, South Carolina. The pitch to Ali. Close to the first down, it'll be just short. It'll be a third and one. Be a little longer than that as they marked Ali out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Yeah, right there on that option pitch, you want Newton to attack more downhill instead of laterally and give your running back a chance to hit that alley full speed. Third and two. Third downs is where Howard has struggled in that first half. Newton will keep it himself for the first down in Bulldog territory. Still on his feet, dragging a man and down to the 30. Four yard line, a first down and a lot more for Kalen Newton, his biggest run of the day. It's a great job right there by Newton. I thought he was going to continue to carry that option, a relationship all the way downfield and pitch that ball to Ali, but good job right there getting the first down, powering through that tackler to carry him for extra yardage. 22 yards in the run. Option look for Newton. He'll keep it himself and fall down and loses a couple of yards. Well played by the Bulldogs. Was looking for Parson on the outside, unable to get to him because Ford was right in his face. Well, here's the thing. When you're running laterally with an option attack, you allow the defense to be in great position to play both you and the pitch man. He has to attack downhill to make those guys commit to leave that pitch man wide open and are in one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one opportunity in space. Loss of four, second and four. Newton keeps it himself. Falls forward, maybe closer to that original line of scrimmage, but only got two yards on that play. Two things you know about a Buddy Pugh coach football team. They're going to be disciplined. They're going to be assignment sound and gap sound. And so far on this drive, they haven't been either of the three. And that's why you're seeing Howard have a lot of success in running this football. Third and 13 from the 37. Newton fires and has the completion to 30-yard line to Kyle Anthony. 
Be short of a first down, though. Anthony's second catch of the game. To me, that was a four down call. And when you're trying to get half of it on third and long, you're setting up to go for it on fourth and medium or fourth and short. And that's exactly what they did, which is why their offense staying out there. Newton has to put that ball on Anthony, by the way. That ball was low. Anthony had to go down and get it. But it sets up a fourth and medium situation for, for uh, Howard's offense here. Anthony with 37 catches now that leads the MEAC. The pitch to Parson. Going to try to run for the first down on the fourth down. Penalty marker's down. He has the first down. Still on his feet. Cuts back. But we'll have to wait for the penalty marker. It's good enough for a first down. A seven-yard pickup by Parson. But a penalty flag is down on the 31. That's going to be on Justin Cheney blocking downfield. That'll take away Parsons' first down play. Parsons ran about 75 yards on that seven-yard run, trying to weave his way through traffic like a New York cab and was able to pick up the first. But, again, effort play on that perimeter by the receiver. Holding forces Howard in a situation where it's fourth and long. Penalty marker flies before the play. Howard looking for Jaquez Ezard and has the catch. I'm sorry, that's Alley. Jordan Alley with the catch. They say it is a catch. They confirm it down at the 10-yard line. He looked for Alley twice and got intercepted. This time he finds Alley for the completion down at the 10. Well, this was just a heads-up play by Kayla Newton, seeing that it was a free play because of the offside by South Carolina State. So he went downfield for the home run ball, and Alley was right there to make the reception. Watch the catch by Jordan Alley. Outstanding job right there. Just tiptoe on the sideline. Great athleticism by the running back, Jordan Alley. Alley had a great touchdown catch against Delaware State. You still say he was down at the two-yard line, but the <laughs> officials gave him the first touchdown in that 41-point first-half performance two weeks ago when Delaware State was here. Alley had the first touchdown catch. Alley goes in motion. Parson gets it up the middle, across the 10-yard line. Howard really needs to get on the board and score a touchdown here to set the tone in the second half. Paul McKeever right there at the bottom of that pile, 6'4", 290. A lot of the pro scouts are here checking him out for next season. But anytime you're trying to run down the middle against in the spread offense, whoever can control the point will control the play. And McKeever has been doing a great job in controlling the point of attack throughout the entire ball game. Official staff is, officials are talking. And what's making Howard's ability to get outside tough today is the fact that they're playing press on the corners with those with those defensive backs and doing a great job in, in maintaining that position against those receivers and being able to play a two-way go and make the stop. So South Carolina's calling a great game defensively. It's up to Howard to try to overcome that and put points up on the board, like you said. Parson. That's a couple of yards, and that's it. Third down coming up. I would expect some sort of run pass option in a traditional sense for Kayla Newton here. We get him out on the perimeter and give him maybe a high low read in the corner and allow him to either find that high low read or pick up the first down with his legs because he still can get a first without scoring a touchdown. Five. Newton keeps it himself. It's close to that first down marker. He's going to be short. Emory will be fourth and one coming up. I'm an offensive guy here, and you know the temptation to go for it. It should be a no-brainer. You're down 13. I understand the aggressiveness here. Coach talked about it right at half, saying, "Hey, we got to be more aggressive," and this is the type of situation he wants to see his team succeed in if they want to come back into this ball game. Fourth and two. Parson doesn't get it. South Carolina State's defense gets the ball back on downs. A big fourth down, and Dietrich Parson couldn't get the yards needed. And South Carolina State's defense keeps Howard off the board. Paul McKeever and Tyrell Goodwin are playing outstanding football right now on the interior. They're clogging things on the inside, so those guards can't get to the second level, which allows those outside linebackers and defensive ends to make the play, and that's exactly what happened there. Great defensive stand for South Carolina State, 
in holding them to zero points and taking away that long drive and taking a lot of the air out of the stadium here at William Green Stadium. Howard needed to get on the board there. That was a crucial series to start this second half. Tyrese Nick, the sophomore, has been great. 10 of 16, 154 yards and a rushing touchdown. Howard brings the pressure. A couple yards by Omar Cummings, who has a touchdown run in that first half. It's a good first down carry right there by Omar Cummings doing a solid job running the football today. It's nice when you can break that tackle at the line of scrimmage like Omar did there. Gets three yards, a second and seven from the eight. Howard's defense is going to have to step up and put some pressure on the Bulldogs with their offense stalling out. Nick will keep it himself. Good run for Nick it's up to the 15 yard line. It'll be short of the first, but a third and short coming up for South Carolina State. A lot of the offense today not in college football is a lot of window dressing. It's all about can you win up front? Right now, Howard's defense has to be able to do that if they want to stop the Bulldogs from just running down the field. Third and short. Give to Jenkins. Jenkins has enough for the first two yard gain by Jenkins. And that moves the sticks. And South Carolina State has played with the same tempo and pace throughout this game. You see right there a lot of movement up front, but it's a great job, great individual effort right there by Omar Cummings to get the first down. But they've done a great job in dictating the pace of this ball game. Nick the throw goes downfield looking for Burroughs in and out of his hands at midfield. Incomplete. Burroughs had a step. Nick threw a nice ball, but weren't able to complete the pass, and there's a penalty marker down. He passed interference on Howard. They're going to mark off the 15 yards. Saw a lot of hand fighting right there. Has a nice tug of the jersey. They'll get that on Brian Cook. Here's a look at Cook. He had a huge play last week. He was able to knock the ball out of the hands. Joshua Chase in the Morgan game. First and five. Cummings falls forward for a couple of yards. Second down coming up. We haven't really seen Howard dial up a blitz defensively. Now might be the time to where you want to dial up something and get pressure to, to create a third medium, a third long situation. Coach London talked to Ryan and said they were going to make some changes on the defensive side and do some things differently. Let's see, might be, they might try to do. Nick will keep it himself. Nick has the first down. That'll move the sticks. It's hard to stop on a dime in this situation with the field because of how wet the field is. So that's why you're seeing these guys defensively on both teams struggle to try to get their footing in and make stops quickly against these ball carriers. So first and 10 after the Nick run. Impressed with the sophomore quarterback. He's even gotten better from when we saw him a few weeks ago in the Morgan State game. Now the Howard defense closes that front door. Nowhere to go there. Turner, one of the big guys in there first. Three different, four different Bison to get in there as James could not go anywhere. And look at James running the football. Yeah, that ball is out right there. That's a fumble. Second and nine after James lost the football but was able to fall for a yard. Jenkins this time to the 35 yard line. Our coaches on the sideline were trying to get the ref to look at the scoreboard, but they, they can't do that. And it's just tough because, again, that, that's a difficult call to, to not make. That ball is out. So the last four runs. Cummings, Nick, James, Jenkins. Four different guys ran the football. That's what South Carolina wants to do. Keep fresh guys in there. Keep the football. Nick 
pitch to Jenkins. Jenkins short of the first down. Fourth down coming up. South Carolina State hasn't played with, without, you know, with fear as far as going for it on fourth down. They still wait to see they're going to send a punt team out here. And what a big defensive stop right there by the Howard Bison. Uh, getting stops against a running game. And the reason why their running game has had success because you just pointed out four different backs on this series getting the football. It's how you keep fresh legs. South Carolina State one for one on fourth downs in this game. But pet away into punt. Ball goes out of bounds close to the 30 yard line and that's where the Howard Bison will have the football with work to do on homecoming trailing 20 to 7 on the Sports Fever television network. The all new Lexus ES, a product of mastery. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. We're right now the place to beat Green Stadium is the Bison trying to battle back here in a key MEAC game against South Carolina State trailing 20 to 7 with 5.15 to go third quarter. Newton loses the football, it's on the turf, and South Carolina State is going to fall on it. Turnover number three on the game by the Howard Bison. Newton with two interceptions, and here fumbles the football, and the Bulldogs fall on it, and will have it at the 40-yard line. Huge turnover. See, that right there is where you see the quarterback and running back kind of have that, that miscommunication. As a former running back myself, you always want the ball, and it's always a fine line to, okay, do I let it go or do I squeeze it? And then the quarterback may see something you don't, and he's trying to pull it out of you, and that's where you have the fumble that occurs right there on the field. And that's why it's always tough, especially in these wet conditions. You may have to go to design or straight call give or call pitch and option plays as opposed to having a QB read it because, again, it's, it's always tough for a running back that wants the football, that wants to make a play, to give up that responsibility in the quarterback that's pulling the football away. So I don't know who to blame on that. It's just the fact that it's an unfortunate, unfortunate situation for the running back quarterback exchange to go so awry. So three turnovers for the Howard Bison in this game. Newton picked off twice in the first half and here the fumble. The third quarter and only on Howard, which will even give South Carolina State better field position. So South Carolina State in great opportunity with a 20 to 7. That they'll have it at the 29 yard line. There's a look at Kalen Newton on the sidelines, the sophomore quarterback. Number one in passing average in the conference, number six in rushing, number one in total offense. This go go offense has struggled today. Nick to keep it himself runs around the outside. Try to get rid of the football before he's not buying it. And then mark him for a four yard loss. He's done that twice today where he's tried that. But well, he came into the game defensively, exceptions, picked off two today, and forced another fumble. So this defense does a great job of playing an opportunity. I'm talking about South Carolina State's defense. Certainly have. Second and 14 after the four yard loss by Nick. Howard's defense is going to have to make a play. Cummings. Straight ahead and gets two yards. And third and 12 coming up. It's hard for South Carolina State to go down the field in the passing game vertically because of the big matchup corners that you see from the Howard Bison. We have a flag here that may even push this thing closer or give Howard or give South Carolina State a first down. Those are the plays that's going to let Coach Long. That's why coaches break things because you, you have a defense of play, a defensive play where you stop the, the offense and then you have a, a mental mistake that turns to a physical one and now it hurts your football team because of the personal foul and just, you know, goes above and beyond uh, what you're expecting your team to do. And Coach Lund London on the sideline just upset, just play football, just play straight up. You know, no need for the extracurriculars. Picture's worth a thousand words with Coach London's description there and actions. 
give to Cummings, tackled in the backfield, the tackle for a loss. I'll tell you what, those as a former college running back, you hate to see, because you see it happening as soon as the ball snap, you're like, yep, they're not going to block this down. They're not going to get this down block, and I'm about to get smashed <laughs> right there in the backfield. Antonio <laughs> Turner, the freshman, came up and did the smashing. <laughs> you see those happening in slow motion, you just hope something happens in between, but nine times out of ten, you're going to get smacked. Second and 12, 330 left here in the third quarter. Nick's going to keep it himself. Tackle by Newell. The heads up play right there by James Newell. He's being alert because Tyrese Nick has done a great job so far in finding little creases within the defense and exploiting. You know, I noticed there just keeps him moving right there. You know, he's as a quarterback, he certainly has all the moves and he leads the MEAC in rushing as a quarterback. He's played very well today. Third and 11. Ball on the 18-yard line. South Carolina State trying to increase their lead over Howard. Well, here's that situation again. Three defenders on two guys at the bottom of the screen. Nick going to go opposite direction to the right. Gets hit up and over. A fourth down and 10 coming up for South Carolina State. If he tried to run to the bubble where it was defensive to the far side, but Howard had numbers on the, on the edge. Force Tyrese Nick to reverse his field and great pursuit and contain defense right there by Howard. Brian Cook once again making a play for his defense. Dylan Bredson, who has two field goals in this game, 46 yarder. Four yard attempt by Dylan, and the kick is no. That keeps the score 20 to 7 to go in the third quarter. <laughs> 2 5 to go here in the third quarter. Redson missed a 34-yard field goal, trying to add the South Carolina State's lead. It stays 20 to 7. Jalen Newton, who fumbled the football, another opportunity here. Newton will keep it himself. Spins off a tackle. Great first down run. Bring up a second and four for the Howard Bison. You look at the numbers, Emery. It doesn't match the performance today. The offensive numbers that we've been highlighting so far this season. You know, number one in all the categories in the MEAC offensively. They're not showing that today. Newton keeps it himself. Gains a yard. Third down coming up. Well, it's been a lot of Kalen Newton today. Um, I feel as though for Howard's offense. We haven't seen him really get the ball in the hands of Kyle Anthony like we want to see them do so uh, in the passing game. Or if you're looking at in the backfield, the backs are not necessarily having the success without Newton touching the football. So I think they have to find ways to put the ball in the hands of their playmakers and let them take it the rest of the way. Third and three. Bulldog showing blitz. Jaquez Ezzard is on the sidelines. Not in the game. Has a hoodie on. Standing down by the 38-yard line and not participating. Here comes the pressure. They knocked the ball away and incomplete. South Carolina State was bringing the heat. Wilson, the 6'4", 280-pound redshirt sophomore, had his hands up, coming right at Kalen Newton. Yeah, what Howard couldn't have in that situation was a quick three. Now, it looks like they wanted to set the screen up, but great job up front by South Carolina State's defense, just sniffing that out and batting the ball away and, again, forcing that quick three and out. Now they're going to put their offense in good situation. We've had Howard a couple of times the last two years. I don't remember this many three and outs yeah. of doing a Howard game, the games we've done on the Sports Fever Television Network. The punt goes out of bounds. South Carolina State will have it back. Craving Pizza Declaration is your go-to neighborhood pizza shop using only the highest quality ingredients. Declaration provides guests with the best gourmet pizza you're going to find anywhere, gluten-free, vegetarian, or meat lovers. All your pizza needs, along with delicious salads and starters, join the team weekday lunch, Sunday brunch, or dinner or happy hour, Monday through Sunday. 
located 804 V Street, just a few short blocks from Howard University campus. They were packed this weekend with homecoming, <laughs> all that great pizza. They may be packed after this game. I'm question, starving. The question is, will Howard fans be talking about a Bison victory or Bison homecoming loss? 45 seconds to go, third quarter. It's getting late. Nick pitches the football and it's free. The pitch to Jenkins. There was a huge opportunity for Howard's defense if they could have gotten the turnover, but Jenkins was able to keep possession. Well, coaches tell you all the time, a play doesn't care who makes it. It just wants to be made. And that's an opportunity right there to make a play. Zamone Robinson is a fresh. He has to go at that football a little bit more aggressively, try to force even more fumbling of the football. But great play nonetheless for the Howard defense backing up South Carolina State. Howard showing some pressure. The quick by South Carolina State. Nick with Jenkins standing next to him. Nick's going to keep it himself, run up the middle. He falls down at the 48-yard line. That's going to be the final play of the third quarter. We're heading to the fourth quarter from our nation's capital in Washington, a key MEAC matchup. The Howard Bison, their two-game win streak, is in jeopardy. They trail 20-7. to seven. The fourth quarter coming up on the Sports Fever Television Network. You can't look away. For a fourth quarter comeback. Nick's pass incomplete. Humble scores around the MEAC in the second quarter. Delaware State with a 21 7 lead over NC Central. Earlier today, Nebraska took care of Bethune Cookman 45 to 9. Norfolk State and Savannah State just underway. And then coming up at 4 o'clock, Morgan State and FAMU. That's your scores around the MEAC today. Big game here. Howard, two-game win streaks in jeopardy. Petaway to punt the football away for South Carolina State. Takes a bounce at the 20. Bulldogs touch it there. So what does Howard need to do in the fourth quarter comeback? You have to think players, not plays. So you can't get too cute or too creative in what you're trying to design. Just think of your best players and get them the football, and they can handle the rest. So we talk about a, a guy on offense, maybe DJ Carson, the running back. You also look at Kyle Anthony, receiver. Those guys have to touch the football on this drive if you're Howard. Howard with just 232 yards of total offense through three quarters, and they average over 500. Newton tackled in the backfield for a loss. That move forward has done a great job. He's 5'11", 240. He's their defensive end, plays a fox position, which is a pseudo outside linebacker, and he does a great job in holding the edge, and that's why Newton couldn't get outside on that play. Has a couple tackles for a loss. Two sacks, playing big for South Carolina. Another tackle for a loss. Howard is going backwards. Parson again blown up. Same guy. There he is. Back-to-back -back defensive plays. Ford has set up shop in the opponent's backfield and that defensive line. I'm just a big fan of South Carolina State's defensive front. You see him split the double team right there and blow up the running back in the backfield. It's going to be up to Kaelin Newton to make plays in the passing game in order for Howard to come back because right now they can't run the football against this defensive front of the Bulldogs. Ford now with eight and a half tackles for a loss. Getting the job done at the defensive end position. Pass is incomplete. Far sideline. and Newton's been getting hit. That's for sure. Take a look at the hit he took here. And quietly, Lane Jones, the junior weak side linebacker, has played a well of a game also. You see right there, forcing the errant throw of Kalen Newton. And another quick three and out for this Howard offense. Lane Jones had a sack last week. Again, South Carolina State. I talked to Buddy Pugh this week, and he said, you know, we only have three sacks. But their defense has dialed up some major pressure. Might get a running into the kicker. It's going to depend a lot on what this call is, running or roughing into the kicker here. Back by Howard. Take another look at it here. We're running in the kicker of the call. Be a five-yard penalty. Ba 
Lebowski. Dakota Lebowski, the putter for Howard, was run into. Makes it fourth and nine. I don't know if Howard's going to go and kick it again. It looks like they are. This coach Buddy Pugh, the job he's done. This very young team, last year they struggled. This year they started on four. But Buddy Pugh's got them again going in the right direction. Needs just seven more wins to become the all-time winningest coach in school history. He's South Carolina State, yes he is. Punt. Lebowski taken at the 40 yard line and a short four yard return. And the boys for South Carolina State. Coming up next week, we'll be back here at Green Stadium. FAMU and Howard. FAMU undefeated in MEAC play, playing Morgan State later today. Great Love the uniforms, helmets. great uniforms of the Rattlers, the Rattlers and the Bison. Sims at Florida A&M doing an outstanding job. We had Florida A&M last year, maybe the year before at Morgan, you said his program's on the rise. They're going to get things turned around, and they have at FAMU. They got a really good quarterback in Ryan Stanley, and like you said, Coach Willie Simmons has done a great job with the Willinium program that he calls it down there <laughs> in Tallahassee. Nick, going to run it. Tackled for a loss, runs right in. To the arms for a big stop by Robinson. He did a great job here, not only taking on that blocker, but also getting off the block right there, setting the edge, and then making the stop. Again, a linebacker with length, 6'4", 220, having a big day today for the for the Bison. Good thing to see Zamone back. He was injured and missed a play or two back in that first half. In that huge game last week against Morgan. Second and 13 after the three yard loss. Handoff going straight ahead. Big run here by James. James gets the first down. Huge run by James. I'm in, impressed by the his running style. One, two, three, four, five. Six tackles he breaks on that run. Uh, that's just an impressive individual effort by Deton James. And we've seen James hit that hole like a rocket, and then we've seen, you know, that type of run where he's able to make guys miss. First and 10 from the 43 for South Carolina State. James gets it again. He gets two yards in the first down carry. 12 15 to go, clock running, and South Carolina State with a 20 to 7 lead on Howard. The Howard offense. It's tops in the MIAC. This downward pressure of this offensive line, I, I've been impressed with South Carolina State up front. They've done a great job of just mashing on Howard's defensive front seven. Second down for Nick. Second down, down, down. And they're taking their time. They're draining the clock. It's a two-possession game if you're Howard, but they haven't shown any punching ability so far in this game. Nick keeps it. Outside. Very close to a first down. Depend on the spot. And I mentioned it earlier that mental mistakes become physical mistakes. And right here, the mental challenge for Howard is the fact that they're getting dominated up front. So you start to see guys be a little bit more relaxed in their responsibilities, not be as aggressive in setting the edge. And that's why you see Tyree Snick and company and that tremendous depth of backs that they have at their disposal start to find bigger creases uh, in this defense to run with. Third and short for Tyrese Nick. They've been pretty good on third downs here today. 31% coming in, but a little better than that today. They got the first down and more. Greer with the big carry. So again, Cummings, Jenkins, James, Greer, stable of backs along with an outstanding running quarterback. And this South Carolina State team, they can run the football. Well, Farika Greer is a 5'11", 225-pound redshirt freshman. So they're young, they're athletic, they have a lot of depth. It's a very good football team here in South Carolina State despite their record. How about Greer last week, Emery? Three carries, two touchdowns. They had him in some <laughs> short yardage, yeah. <laughs> their win last week over Delaware State 30 to 19. I told you earlier Delaware State has a lead right now in North Carolina Central playing that game at Dover. 
win the second home game of the year for Delaware State. Nick on the keeper. Delaware State head coach Rod Mills said is a great guy and a great coach. He's going to have that program back to where it was when, back when he played. Yeah, alumnus of Delaware State. When he played, they won championships. He That's what to, he said, yep. He wants to get back to that. Tyrese Nick has just gotten better each and every week. They started with loss to Georgia Southern and U.S. and UCF. Started that 0-4 season, but each week... Tyrese has gotten better and has South Carolina State playing great football right now. James inside the five-yard line, close to the goal line, and he was stopped down at the one. So James gets the first down, a first and goal coming up for the one-yard line after the rocket by James. He gets through the hole fast. At some point, Pride has to kick in for this Howard Bison defense, and you want to see guys still want it uh, from an aggressiveness standpoint. You haven't seen that on his drive as Nick's as Nick runs it in for a touchdown right there against his Bison defensive front. So, again, we've seen South Carolina State just do a great job on across the board. And what I've been impressed with about Tyree Snick is the fact that we don't see him pressed. He's calm throughout the game. Nick now with two touchdowns, rushing the football, seven rushing touchdowns on the season for the leading rusher in the MEAC, Tyrese Nick. Some of the homecoming crowd are starting to stand up and walk out of Green Stadium. Dylan Bredson has a couple of field goals on for the extra point. And it is good. South Carolina State takes the road trip up to Washington, D.C. Tyrese Nick and the boys with a 27-7 lead over the Bison. El Monaco, the feeling, the flavor, the place. Warhorn Steakhouse, you can't fake steak. South Carolina State has Howard's number. They lead the all-time series 34-11. And how about Buddy Pugh? He's 12 and two all time against the Howard Bison. Lost to him last year for the first time in 15 years on South Carolina State's homecoming. The Bulldogs business road trip up to the nation's capital. And they're taking care of business 27 to seven over the Bison. It's Coach Pugh right there. He's seen a lot of football. And again, it's one of the better coaches in college football regardless of division. Ball goes out of bounds on the kickoff. Down on the field to Ryan Pierce, right? Phil Emery, obviously some serious concern on this Howard sideline, specifically offensive coordinator Brennan Marion. He's harping to his guys, saying, please play more physical, block better. That was an issue for the past couple of drives. Down by 20 now. If they're going to chip into this lead, they're going to have to do that in these next couple drives. Thank you, Ryan. Coach Marion's not used to this. His go-go offense has done exactly what the name says, but tonight, today it's broke. It's not going anywhere. It's been a stop-stop defense by South Carolina State. Wide open. Gillespie, touchdown, Howard. Gillespie's first touchdown of the season, his third catch of the season. They needed someone to step up, and Gillespie does that. Newton hits him for the touchdown for the Bison. Talk about a busted coverage. He was all alone, no one within five to ten yards near him. Just put the two defenders who focus on the shorter route. A great job by Gillespie making that reception and bringing it into the end zone. Damian Gillespie from Singapore with a touchdown. His first of the season, third catch of the season. Extra point, Joseph on. And it's good. Some of those people that some of the people that headed for the exit, they might want to turn around and come on back to Green Stadium. The Bison on the board. They still have some work to do. South Carolina State with a 27-14 lead. Newton's thinking comeback. Your wallet. Back football on the Sports Fever Television Network. Kalen Newton with his 16th touchdown of the season, a 65-yarder. Damian Gillespie put Howard on the board. Second touchdown of the day for the go-go offense. There's a look at Gillespie on the sideline. 27-14 score. South Carolina State will have the football back with 9.15 to go. Half 
Smoke Smoke, that very proud sponsor of Howard Athletics. They'd like to welcome the newest sponsor, Half Smoke DC, located minutes away from the campus on 651 Florida Ave Northwest. Their slogan, don't grow up, it's a trap. Half Smoke. Proud sponsor of Howard Athletics. One of the best slogans out there. It's definitely a trap. This could have been a trap game for the Howard Bison. With FAMU coming next week. See if they can pull off the comeback. 9.15 to go. The Green Stadium crowd getting behind their Bison. Greer stopped at the line of scrimmage. Maybe gained a one yard. will bring up a second and nine. Jomir Augustine, I think, has, has played really well today. I, I've seen him do a lot of stuff at the line of scrimmage, making one-on-one -on -one tackles in space. And right now, if you're Howard's defense, you have to continue to play smart. You can't play against yourself. You have to play disciplined football if you want to get a quick stop and put your offense back out there on the field. Jameer with over 20 tackles this season. Look for guys like Allison and Turner and Fuller, some of those big players in the Howard defense. They're going to need to make a stop and make it in a hurry. South Carolina State's in no hurry. They want to use as much clock as possible, play clock down to five before they get the playoff. Nick hands it off to Greer. Greer straight ahead. Good run across the 40-yard line. Stopped at the 44. He'll bring up a third and two coming up. Huge third down. On the way here and homecoming here in the fourth quarter. And the Bison trying to come back to stay alive in the MEAC and keep their opportunities to have meaningful games in November. Because believe it or not, Wednesday is the final day of October. we got November football starting next weekend. Well, wow. Games mean a lot. Nick, the throw. Incomplete. Was looking for Thomas. They're going to get Howard with an offside here. And just makes their job easier offensively with South Carolina State. Well, it's not going to take long for Coach London to realize the problems here today. The penalties, the turnovers, three turnovers for Howard, and then a number of penalties here in the second half have given South Carolina State second and third opportunities. And with that penalty, they get the first down. Most important thing right now for Coach London is that clock. 7.47 to go, fourth quarter. Baxley in motion. He has a couple of big catches. Straightforward run across midfield into Bison territory. But what you're going to start to see from Howard defensively is guys, first guy that's going to get to the ball carry is going to hold him up, while the second group of guys that come through are going to try to strip that football away. Perfect example right here on this play. Great stop by 38, by 98, I'm sorry. And you see the rest of the team come and try to strip that ball out. That's how they're going to try to generate a turnover because that's what they have to do here. Down two scores. They need the football back in a hurry. Good job by Greer to hold on to that football. I'm sure South Carolina State coaches are telling their guys, hold on to that football. They're going to try to take it from you. Jenkins. One yard gain, third down coming up. Probably the biggest third down defensively of the game right here. And that's Brian Cook right there on the, on the ground right there. Look at his injury with 6.52 to go here in the fourth quarter. Keep the ball moving down the field requires planning, strength, and dedication. As one of the United Van Lines premier agency groups, Hildrum knows a thing or two about moving. If you're moving your home or your office, you can count on the team at Hildrum to get you where you need to go safely and efficiently. To learn more about Hildrum, you can, they can help you with your next move. Receive a free estimate. Visit Hildrop.com, proud sponsor of Howard Bison Athletics. Take a look here if you can see the injury to Cook. One thing I noticed about Cook and his tackles, he always is going low. Likes to tackle low, and Cook's the injured player. He was the defensive star of the game last week. Had his first interception, returned it 41 yards for a score. That's what they could use now, but I don't think South Carolina's going to throw the football. And, of course, we've talked about it a couple of times already today, but it's still I talked to Coach London this week and said, is that a play that you're going to show you know, football players at all levels, the play that Cook made where he didn't give up on a play, came out of nowhere to knock the ball out of Chase's hands, 
at the two-yard line to get the touchback instead of the touchdown last week, and that was the difference of them winning that game against Morgan State last week. Well, what did he say? He said absolutely. He said <laughs> and Coach London's been around football for a long, long time. Of course, uh, played at Richmond, won a national championship at Richmond. The head coach at Virginia uh, was the coach at the University of Maryland before coming here as an assistant coach. And he said of all his years at football, that was one of the best plays that he's – Scene as far as hustle, determination, not giving up on a play. And uh, he said he is going to show that play to a lot of anyone that's going to want, want to watch it. Coach London's going to show it. That was a great play. That was they, one of the best plays I've ever seen. They need a play like that here now. The third and five. The Bulldogs. Bison territory. Big tackle for a loss. Back at midfield. Jenkins is hit and loses three yards. That's the defensive play that the Bison need. It's a good defensive stop right there by Howard, just shooting the gap and just blowing it up in the backfield. And that's what you want to see. Teams play aggressive. Good job right there by big number 96, Tyler Fuller, just finding his way through the trash and finding the ball carrier. Fuller's had a big game. Played big on the defensive side, made some big stops. That was a huge one. Fourth and eight. Pet away will punt the football away. Ball bounces at the 20 and taken. Not much of a return at all. Taken by Boyd. Booze and Oz restaurant located at 5933 Georgia Ave and 1005 U Street, Northwest, where good food and good people connect. Visit their newest location on 5933 Georgia Avenue. Free parking available at the Walmart Garage. It's Ooze and Oz Restaurant. Soul food, the best in soul food. Ooze and Oz, proud to be a sponsor of Howard Athletics. New quarterback for Howard. Sliding down at the 20-yard line. Newton didn't leave the game. Stayed in the game. Patricia ran the football up to the 20-yard line or close to it and then slides down. That was a one-play thing for Patricia. Richard, sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. It was such a natural uh, national recruiting base here for the Bison. Newton back in at his quarterback position. Being chased from behind, throws the football. It's intercepted. Third interception of the game. Or was it dropped? Well, here's what I don't understand. He get bailed out by the person who fought rough in a pass wow. penalty. But Newton was staring at Ali wide open in the flat and decided to take the difficult of the two throws and threw the interception. So his previous two interceptions, who was he throwing the ball to? Exactly. Ali. Trying to go to Ali again, and Nichols' interception taken away. Oh, yeah, that's, that right there is... Not surprised they call Pat, uh, roughing the quarterback on that one. Johnson, 98, was the one that hit him. There's the interception. Nichols, and they take it away. Five minutes to go. Howard gets the ball at the 40-yard line here. That penalty bailed out the Howard Bison and, and Kale and Newton because that was a horrible throw. But second life right here. Let's see what he can do to rebound and lead his team down the field to put the point, put points up on the board. That would have been the fourth turnover by the Bison. Two interceptions in the first half by Newton. Newton's going to run the football. Cross midfield, gets out of bounds at the 46-yard line. A first down for the higher Howard Bison, and they are in South Carolina State territory. And with the way they have their offense set up, they just have to get into the end zone, and it makes it, another close game because their defense has shown the ability to make stops. They have all their timeouts. They just got to find a way to get into the end zone. Uh, South Carolina State is going to give up all of these things up uh, underneath. Not going to let themselves get beat deep. They just have to find that key play to get it downfield. Watch out for Kyle Anthony. Leads the MEAC in receptions with 38. Looking for Iggy Renoso out of the backfield and Newton threw it behind Iggy. Incomplete pass. Second down coming up. It's not one of Newton's best performances we've seen uh, this season. He had a lot of room to step up in that pocket and find a different target downfield. You don't want to make ill-advised throws when you're trying to come back and get points in a hurry. You just got to find ways to convert first downs. Find those easy completions, and that's how you can have some success. 
Kayla Newton has thrown an interception in every game so far this season through two today. Newton has the completion to Anthony. Anthony's third catch of the day and a first down for the Howard Bison moving the chains with 4.04 to go in the game. That's a great job by Anthony going up, playing his height and going getting that football and helping his team convert a first down. 39 catches for Anthony. He had 40 last season. Looking for Anthony again. All kinds of contact on Anthony, but no penalty. Coach London wanted a flag. I see right there, Newton in the pocket. Takes another late hit. Coach London wanted pass interference on that pass play to Anthony. Did not get it. Second and 10, little 35. Newton setting up the screen. Iggy Reynoso makes the catch, but no gain. Back to the line of scrimmage. The well-timed blitz right there by South Carolina State. They came with a nice stunt on the outside. Kind of forced Newton to get rid of that football quickly. If it wasn't a low pass, it probably would have went for some positive yards. That's kind of that's when you kind of want the, the running back to drop. Option pitch, Carson. Carson gets a couple. It's going to bring up fourth down, fourth and two or three to go for the Howard Bison with 3:10 to go in the game. Clock running. Trailing 27-14. They need this conversion, and they really need six quick. Newton on a fourth and one from the 26. Taking up too much time here. Clock running, 250. Hand off Parson. Try to fight for the first down. And he's got the first. If South Carolina State says he doesn't, it's going to depend on the spot, and they give him the first down. Okay. That was all Parsons right there, that second effort right here, because he stonewalled, see him keep those legs churning, and twist himself into the first down right there. 2.43 to go, clock runs Newton. Steps up, runs the football, center of the field, down on the 15-yard line, that's where he was stopped. Bring up a second and short. They need to score quick. Clock continues to run. The urgency isn't there. You see guys walking back to the line of scrimmage. They don't have the time or the luxury. This is not a one-score game. They have to get set, get ready quick, and run a play. First and ten. Or second is down, excuse me, in short. Noso pulls it away from him. Does Newton. Newton runs for the first down. That moves the sticks and stops the clock. Newton pulled it away from Renoso and kept it himself for a first down run. If you're South Carolina State, you're just loving at the slow pace that Howard is operating with right now on his possession. Newton goes to the end zone, incomplete. Penalty marker is down. Was looking for Justin Cheney, the 6'4 tight end, was the attended receiver. He's injured. You, that's, that's a unique concept because they had two guys in the same area. See what they call here, pass interference. Well, this go-go offense is missing Jaquez Ezard, who's been on the sidelines, has not played here today. We'll step aside, 1.56 to go. Can the Bison pull the comeback on homecoming? The Bulldogs up 27-14 on the Sports Fever Television Network. Carlisle Hotel at DuPont Circle. Kempton Hotels. Book your reservation today. Proud sponsor of Howard University Athletics. Don't forget, coming up next week, we'll back here in the nation's capital, FAMU, undefeated in MEAC play, taking on Howard next week. The Rattlers and the Bison, 1 o'clock. We also have a MEAC doubleheader, 4 o'clock. We'll have Morgan State and Bethune-Cookman next week on the Sports Fever Television Network. So we have an injured player in that play. Justin Cheney, the tight end, was injured. and He was interfered with in the end zone with 1.56 to go here in the game. Howard down 27 to 14. Check on some other scores around the MEAC. Delaware State still holding on to a 21-7 lead over North Carolina Central. That's with 36 seconds to go before the half. Delaware State 
Second home game of the season at Dover, Delaware, up 21-7. And Savannah State has a 7-3 lead over Norfolk State. That's with four with 15.40 to go in the second quarter. And Morgan State and FAMU will get started at 4 o'clock. We'll step aside, 156 to go here at Howard University. Any customizable streaming TV. With my fast Wi-Fi, I can choose my channel packs to watch without a box. Even live sports. It's TV made just for me. And a little Chris. <laughs> Click call or visit today. Back at Howard University. Injury to Justin Cheney. They have his leg braced up and he is standing. We'll put him on the cart. We never like to see the air cast and he just hope that it's not as serious as it looks and he can get back healthy. They, they really like him at the tight end position too. 6'4", 240, 10 catches, 166 yards coming in to the game. Had two catches last week in the win at Morgan State for 33 yards. So when we get back to football, Howard will have it. Keep your head up, young man. That, that right yep. there is a, it's a tough sight to see, you know, because you're dealing with a guy that's a freshman, a guy that wants to play. His teammates are behind him dealing with the injury. Um, Look at that reaction from the Howard sidelines and Kalen Newton and the guys he'll, giving he'll, a cheer for Justin Cheney, the injured Howard Bison being carted off. He'll fight back from his minor setback. When we get back to football, be first and goal from two. There's Coach London shaking his head. We said we can't lose another guy. So they got a first and goal from the two-yard line after the pass interference call and the pass play from Newton to Cheney. And Cheney's a senior tight end, I'm sorry, from Hammond, Louisiana. Louisiana, that's where you grew up, right? Hammond is about 30 miles north of New Orleans where I grew up. Touchdown from one yard out. Parson with his second touchdown run of the game. He has four touchdowns in the last two weeks. The Bison are on the board, 27-20 is the score. Do you go for two or do you go for the extra point one? I'm no Pat Shermer. I'm kicking the extra point here. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no downside right there. You kick the extra point, and if you are able to get a touchdown, you win by one. So Joseph on for the extra point after the Parson touchdown. Extra point is good. We have a 27-21 game with 1.53 to go on homecoming here at Howard. Now here's the situation. Howard still has all three of their timeouts. A minute 53, obviously you want to try to dial up your best onside kick you have in your offense. And they practiced one in the Delaware State game two weeks ago. They did. And they were up And they big. did get it, but no, they was, got it. They got it, right, that's Remember? what I'm saying. Yeah. It was unexpected. Though. Yes, yes. Now, now it's going to be expected. Exactly, so you have to find your best one. But we'll see. Because now, can, with the three, with 153, can you kick it away you and hope that your defense away. can stop them and get three and out and get the ball back? We used to call this finding the boogeyman. You're going to find the guy in that second wave of, of, of the receiving team that looks like he's not going to catch the football and try to kick it straight to him, maybe squib it to where it gets that funny bounce, and that's, that way you have a scrum for the football. I'm hoping to do that tomorrow. See Mike, <laughs> Mike Myers' movie, The Boogeyman. The Boogeyman, that's right? That's what I call Michael Myers, right? Number Halloween. One movie, number one movie in the country. You're going to see it in the daylight, though, right? Of course. <laughs> I'm scared if I saw it at night. Are you kidding me? Kick to open grass. There's a lot of open grass. You don't necessarily have to kick it onside. Here comes the onside kick by the Howard Bison. This could be an exciting football play. It bounces the right way. It needs to go 10 yards. It does. Howard recovers it. Oh, my. The Howard Bison. Able to recover the onside kick. A perfect bounce. Went 10 yards, but there's a penalty marker down at the 35-yard line. And look at the reaction of their kicker, Dakota Laboski. He can't believe it. Are they going to call offsides? I think they are. Yes, they are. And look at Coach London's reaction. He is all kinds of fired up. Wow. Dakota knew it. Talk about a play of the day. And they did a great job of letting the guy touch it first before it traveled 10 yards. But that ball 
you see right there on the replay, I don't know who lined up offside, but they allowed it to go 10 yards. Wow. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Everything was perfect, but someone left a little early. So what they're doing, uh, because of the new rules, 27 right there is the reason why they call illegal formation because he's technically overloading one side, and that's one of the safety rules that we've seen change in college football where you can't have too many guys on one side. Uh, it's almost like that flying wedge thing that you're trying to eliminate. And just that little subtle setup right there is what caused the penalty. Dakota Lavosky realized that he was the only one that knew that there was a penalty. And in his reaction, he was just standing right there where after he kicked it. So he, he knew exactly what it was. And I don't think anyone else saw that. But Coach London was extremely upset because everything else was textbooks. I, I've never, the bounce that that took was perfect. It went to 10 yards and right into the hands of the Howard player for the perfect recovery. But that penalty with overloading the one side and couple of new rules in college football dealing with special teams uh, for safety issues and despite the bison being down they're certainly having a good time dancing here on homecoming well how do you bottle up that adrenaline and, and drink it again for this upcoming wow. onside kick right wow i don't now you're gonna have guys probably hesitant to move yeah not knowing the rules buddy pew I can't even imagine what he was thinking on the opposite side at South Carolina State when that kick took place. He's halfway out on the field. Yes, he is. Kudolovsky will try it again. Kicking from the 30 this time. Green Stadium goes silent. 153 to go. The Bison down 27-21. Needs to go 10. It does. It hits a Howard player. The ball's free. It's on the ground. South Carolina State picks it up. But I think it hit a Howard player before it went 10 yards, but I don't see any penalty markers. Yeah, the, the ref right here, the back judge, just signaled that it was an illegal touch, yeah, but there it, was it no touched, flag it, it touched before It touched before it went 10 yards because they kicked from the 30, and it got touched at the 38-yard line. Yeah. You can see it right here. One of the Howard Bison hits him right there, bottom of your screen. You see it there. Hit number 28. Yep, at the 39-yard uh, line, and that's where South Carolina State will have the football. They look over the sideline and say, why is the football here? <laughs> now, again, they still have three timeouts. They obviously can't allow any yards. they got to get a quick three and out, and they have to play assignment sound discipline, no penalties. And you can see them jumping around. They're starting. They're feeling it. The defense is feeling it. They know they need to make a big play. It's just can they make it? Because Tyrese Nick and South Carolina State's offense has been excellent today. 152 to remain. First and 10. The Bison 39-yard line. They give the ball to Jenkins. Jenkins forward on a first down carry for four yards. Bring up a second and six coming up. Three timeouts for Howard. They're going to take one. So Howard takes their first timeout. They have two remaining here with 1.47 to go. Howard trying to win their third straight game and stay in contention in the MEAC. They have an opportunity to win a MEAC title and go to the Celebration Bowl. Now, two yards, five seconds. So that's the trade-off you had there if you're Howard. You want to get that stop quicker and get that timeout call quicker. You're South Carolina State. I'm, I'm a football junkie, so I'm thinking back to the old Texas Nebraska game. When Nebraska sold out on that, that fourth and one, and they hit him over top of the tight end. Be interested to see how they call third down here. Not second down, but third down when Howard is going to sell out on, on that on stopping the run. They got a favorable spot. I saw a four yard gain, but they only gave him two yards. <laughs> second and eight for the 37. Need to get my eyes checked. Nick keeps it himself, gets out of bounds. That's good news that he got out of bounds. That stops the clock, saves a timeout. And he look, he's lucky he didn't call for a face mask on that. He aggressively grabbed the face mask of the Howard defender. But you're right, he got out of bounds, saved the timeout. Now if they get a stop here, you have a situation where you could carry a timeout 
to offense. Here we go. Big third down. Take a look at that face mask there with the straight arm. Third and five from the 34. 141 to go. Howard needs a stop. Presser situation for the sophomore quarterback from Johnston, South Carolina. Looking to bring his South Carolina State Bulldogs on the road and get a win on homecoming. Jenkins has the first down. Wow. To the 25-yard line. That moves the chains. Well, they, they say the fastest way from point A to point B is straight ahead. You saw a great down block by the left guard. First and 10 from the 25 for the Bulldogs. Looking to win their third game and their third win in four games. Jenkins gets two yards. Howard calls their final timeout of the game. 1.30 to go. What a game. Top to bottom, man, the MEAC has been highly competitive this year. There's no pushover teams in this conference, and it just bodes well for their chances moving forward as far as outside of who goes to the Celebration Bowl, but also from a strength of schedule standpoint, now people can look at this conference and say, you know what, this team is good. This is a tough game. This is not an easy game. So that just strengthens their case, not only to get to the Celebration Bowl, but also to not only get an at-large bid down the line because this conference, from what we've seen, all season long, there are no easy victories. Absolutely not. South Carolina State was a player or two away from beating Bethune Cookman. They only lost that game 28-27, so they, they won that game. You're talking about this team on a four-game win streak instead of winning three of their last four after starting the season 0-4. Victory formation for Tyrese Nick. South Carolina State on a business trip on homecoming come into Washington, D.C. and spoil the homecoming party for Howard University and end the Bison's two-game win streak. 27-21. Talk about making things a bit more murkier in the MEAC considering what happened today and what is happening around the conference with the rest of the scores. Delaware State is, is taking it to North Carolina Central. Yep. FAMU has a tough one tonight. Against Morgan State. So South Carolina State will go to three and four overall. And more importantly, three and two in MEAC conference play. And Howard will fall to three and four overall and three and two in the MEAC. Delaware State has a 21-7 lead over North Carolina Central at the half. Savannah State is... 14-3 lead over Norfolk State, Savannah State last season in the MEAC before going back to Division II. And then Morgan State and FAMU will get underway at 4 o'clock in Nebraska beat Bethune-Cookman out of conference action in the MEAC, 45-9 over Bethune-Cookman. Final eight seconds will run off in front of the homecoming crowd here at Green Stadium on campus at Howard University. Fourth down coming up. Four seconds remain in this one. I think without question, the Howard's offense missed Jaquez Ezzard. Not the same. This offense that averaged 506 yards of total offense and averaged 35 points. Number one in just about every offensive category in the MEAC coming in. South Carolina State's defense showed up in a big way here today. Tyrese Nick with the kneel down in South Carolina State. And Buddy Pugh come on the road and get the win. 27 to 21. 
over Howard. Don't forget, next week we'll be back here at the nation's capital as FAMU comes to town to take on the Howard Bison as the Bison will try to bounce back from this loss here on homecoming. For my partner, the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. And Ryan Pierce down on the sidelines. Phil Shaner says good night from Washington, D.C. We'll see you next week. South Carolina State, the Bulldogs get the 27-21 win over the Howard Bison.